Hiya, hi, hi Lux, hi, welcome to chat, welcome to an unexpected little thing, an unexpected change of plans for my schedule. Today was supposed to be just a little tea review. Uh, and then, uh, about 12 hours after my Metal Gear stream on Friday, I got an email from Twitch saying, hey, congratulations, you're, uh, you're affiliate now, haha, <laughs> funny, you're dropping this on you on a Saturday morning. <laughs> when you're supposed to be on break, when you were planning to go to the movies and stuff, it's like, hey, better get this ready for tomorrow. It's like, oh no. Where's my music? What the hell? There's supposed to be music playing. What's going on? Hello? Play the music. Why isn't there music playing? There we go. Is this the right song even? Hang on. No, this is like a fucked up sounding song. What the, where's my music? What the fuck? Hello? There's supposed to be music playing, whatever. I'm just gonna open Spotify and play something. Whatever, we'll... Fuck it. <laughs> fuck it, where's my Spotify? Hang on. Let me... Th there's supposed to be music on the... Has there never been music on this screen? There's supposed to be... Hang on. No, wait, because that's the gaming screen. That's right. That's why there's no music on that screen, because that's not even the right screen. What am I doing? I'm a bit all over the place. I'm a tiny bit nervous. But yes, thank you. So, today, I thought, well, hey, there's, you know, uh, here you, what the fuck? <laughs> I randomly got a reply from YouTube <laughs> on my Twitter. I got really confused by that. Get that paycheck? Yeah, I, I don't think I'm ever going to get paid by Twitch. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to get paid. What am I going to make, like... 10 cents on it. By the way, did ads play before this stream? I'm not totally sure. I feel like I don't have like midstream ads enabled, so I think it's just going to show pre roll ads. But I'm not totally sure how that works because I have all my ad settings like disabled. I'm not totally sure. Uh, didn't get one? Okay. So maybe there's no ads yet. That's good. That'll give me time to like ask <laughs> what people would prefer for ad settings. Uh, but yeah, so today I've got a bunch of stuff in Twitch chat. A bunch of new redeems that I can't see because I'm stupid and neglected to prepare a... <laughs> I have so much sh shit on my um, screen right now. <laughs> my OBS has gone from being like a super simple, oh there's my chat screen and then there's my my restream. Uh, channels so I can see what I have to enable and that's it. That's all that's on my screen. It's that and then it's the screen recording Like cool. This is nice. This is easy. This is really simple a And now it's not like that anymore. Now. I also have my twitch quick actions and my activity feed uh, So it is just a very it, it has quickly become much more um, Oh, what's the word? Uh, chaotic and I still need to add more things like I need to add twitch chat to this so that I can monitor Fucking what's it called so I can monitor my goddamn um, I don't know what I'm saying. I should add a profanity redeem so I can stop doing this so I can monitor my things I I've completely forgotten what I'm talking about. I'm so like blank right now. I don't know what I'm saying <laughs> God, uh, but yeah, uh, come on, oh, there we go, okay, okay, there we go, this is a very fucked up looking thing, but now at least I can see my, yeah, I see, I see that, thank you, oh, this is terrible, this is terrible, this setup is awful, <laughs> this is a terrible setup, okay, but you can see there's new redeems, there's, there's redeems at all now, actually, there weren't, there didn't used to be redeems. Uh, now there are. Uh, I'm still working on them. I'm probably going to change some of them, uh, especially in terms of pricing. And I will also probably do a couple other things with it. I'm not totally sure yet, but there, there will be things. But anyway, regardless, um, <laughs> now there is uh, a little bit um. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to move on to the T part of this stream. Hang on. Hey, check it out. This is a bit chaotic. Hang on. I'll try to 
here, can I like... So this is every single tea I own. <laughs> Saving up to feed the tea pet. Yeah, I don't know if the tea pet's gonna get out today, but we'll see. But this is every single tea I own. Hang on, I'm going to move my webcam actually over here so that it can record me while I'm doing this because otherwise it won't be able to because I will be staring at it from a weird direction. Is there anything I can even mount it on? I think I can mount it on this can. Okay. Yeah, that works. Let me just reset the position super quick. Sorry, you're going to see some controls. Oh no, it's my controls. Okay, here we go. Okay, there we go. We're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, so now these are all my different teas. Uh, I have a lot of them. Setting up so you can drink tea yourself? Nice. Yeah, this is a tea setup not for normal people that I have right here. This is a tea setup for uh, nutcases and this insane people <laughs> who drink way too much tea. Hang on, let's, let's real quick pick this up and I'll sort of scan over it so you can see. So this basket is my Puar teas. This basket is my white teas. This basket is my oolong teas. This basket is my green teas. And then that basket down there is my, oh, that's my cup right there. I was drinking water out. That basket down there is my black teas. So there is a lot of tea for us to review and go through. So much so in fact that I actually went ahead and made a little image, a little graphic. Uh, to, for that, and for the people who choose to redeem, uh, pick tomorrow's tea. Uh, let me find it. Let me find the graphic. What the hell? What did I do with it? You can see my head's all twisted around because I am in an extremely weird place right now. Okay, here it is. Here's my tea menu. I made this in Canva in like an hour. <laughs> so, we have got... A whole lot of teas for you to pick from. As you can see, there's a lot of teas here. I haven't actually counted how many teas this is, but it's a lot. There's a lot of teas. Also, I'm going to go ahead and try to fix this again. Hang on. Let me just see if I can... Um... There we go. Okay. Yeah, I think this is better. Yeah, this looks better. Okay. Sorry, I'm flailing around trying to do this. Um, but yeah, so these are all my teas uh, listed. There's one tea that isn't listed. It's a Puar. I didn't list it because it sucks and I hate it. And it's like the worst tea I've ever drank. Uh, but, you know, that's the current situation. Uh, as you can see, it's, <laughs> I've kind of crowded my oolongs. Gonna go for two seconds you make your tea? Okay, don't worry. I'm just gonna be talking about this absurd menu of teas <laughs> that I have here. Uh, but yes, so there are a lot of teas here. Um, we've got uh, all my black teas, like I said, in that one basket. Uh, then my black teas and my dark teas are actually combined into the single basket. As you can see, my green teas are mostly the same kind of tea, uh, just from different years. <laughs> way too many oolong teas, frankly. <laughs> like, way too many. Uh, I've got plenty of white teas. Now, I feel like it looks like I have more white teas than I actually do, just because there's, like, uh, these pouches in it that take up a lot more space. Uh, then I've got my Puar teas, which is probably the tea I've invested the most into, because it's the kind of tea I like the most. Puar tea is really dark and earthy tasting, with a nice sort of tang to it. We're going to move this menu down into the corner. Actually, we'll put this, where should I put this? Where can I put this that it's not going to be, like, in the way? We'll just put it here for now. That's a decent spot for it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good spot. Okay. So, like I was saying, this is every single tea I have, and today I am going to go ahead and rank and rate every single one. This is something I did way back when I first started getting into teas, when I had, like, only five tea. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, God. Back when I only had like five teas to rank. So now I have far more teas to rank. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. We're gonna rank every single one of these and see what the uh what's it called? We're gonna see uh how they've all held up. Now, I don't know, should I have like a um what's it called? Should I get like uh, um, um, what is it? What, what, what's the word I'm thinking of? A tier list. Did I bother making a tier list? I don't even know. 
I feel like it's gonna be kind of what's it called kind of points like I, don't know, I feel like I'll just remember innately like I know which T's are which but I don't know I don't know I think I'm just gonna leave it I think I'm gonna just leave it for now and then at the end I'll sort them all by rank oh, excuse me gosh but anyway let's get started I'm going to start moving these god damn okay where are these uh here we go uh, these are the oolongs and the whites. So I will put these on the floor. Tragically, these are being put on the floor disrespected because there's just no other way to do this that's going to be... You know, let's start from top to bottom, actually. Let's start with my blacks. Let's start with my blacks. And I will actually run, get up real quick, and grab a guy one. dish so I can actually show some of these teas uh, and you know describe them in a better way than trying to show you the inside of a weird gnarly bag see here's my presentation dish this is what I use if I'm feeling fancy about my teas uh, let's also adjust this slightly okay there we go that's good so let's get started by just going through every single one of these teas, and I'm just gonna go through and talk about each one kind of individually, kind of just you know, we'll chat about the flavors and whatnot. Back to Quile, but you got your tea and sunflower honey. Ooh, sunflower like infused with sunflowers or made from sunflowers. Because I know you can make tea or something like tea out of. Uh, certain wild flowers like dandelions you can make tea by boiling the leaves and adding sugar now that's a thing isn't it? but I guess it could also just be tea from bees that were near sunflowers <laughs> made from you think ooh, tasty all right well just in time because these black teas are probably similar to what you're drinking I think is black tea or red tea tends to be the base for a lot of English teas, like uh, Earl Grey and English Breakfast. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive right in to my first tea. This is not the first tea I ever got, this is just the first tea I happen to grab. Um, so this is uh, Vietnamese ancient tea, uh, wild tea. Wild ancient tree tea. Wild ancient tea. Yeah, that makes sense. I think I'm making dandelion honey this summer. Ooh, nice. I always wanted to try that, but I never found like a good place that had a lot of dandelions, which kind of sucked, but whatever. But anyways, so ancient tree tea is a specific kind of denominator that's used for trees that are at least 500 years old. Uh, if a tree is 500 or more years old, it is classified as ancient. And so uh, it's, you really can't, get an exact date on it because obviously after uh, after just a hundred years you kind of lose track of it and 500 years is like whew, way over but this is ancient tree green tea i think the color balance is a little off hang on let me really quickly just configure this video Let's see if we can make this a bit we want not contrast saturation not saturation either i think we want the temperature to be different where's the temperature setting maybe we want white balance actually hang on is it white balance yes it is white okay there we go that's a bit better all right so this is ancient tree in denmark in the countryside there's a ton of dandelions ah nice yeah for me dandelions i could just find them in like 
know, I'll find dandelions in the cracks on the pavement at best. <laughs> I live in a, I used to live in a suburb, now I live in a metropolitan area, so it's not, it's not great hunting. But like I was saying, uh, wild grown ancient tea, ancient, ancient, ancient tree. I can't even talk. Tea and tree sound too similar. It's really annoying. But ancient tree tea. This is from Vietnam. It, this does have a slightly different flavor profile to normal black tea, but it's not like hugely different. You can taste the difference between um, ancient tree tea and normal tea typically, but <laughs> being a hundred, yeah. But yeah, it tends to be Black teas taste very similar to each other, typically. And this, you know, black teas, that's sort of a thing with black teas is that you really have to taste a lot of them to start noticing the differences. I've noticed some differences between the various black teas I have, but not huge ones. Like, I'm not quite at the point where if you handed me, you know, a cup of tea, I could tell you right off the bat, oh, this is from... Uh, this is from this province and this mountain. Some people can do that. Those are fucking tea sommeliers. They are insane. Uh, I'm gonna take my towel and just wipe this out so we've got a clean vessel for the next tea I'm gonna show up. There we go. Now the next tea is my favorite black tea to drink, my sort of daily drinker. Uh, this is a 2023 uh, Black Gold Bai Lu Chun. This is kind of, this is for me my go-to black tea. Like if I just want a black tea, this is kind of, this is probably the cheapest black tea you can import. And it's also one of the prettiest. Uh, hang on. This is also the tea that uh, one of my redeems picked tomorrow's tea. Pick the next stream's tea uh, is this. So these, this is also called snail tea because it's wrapped into these, they're sort of rolled into these little balls that kind of look a bit like snails. You know, they're very pretty. They look really nice. They unfurl into these beautiful leaves. And they've got like, it's like, you know, like the package says, black gold. Kind of got this nice black and, uh, what is that? Orange, amber-ish? Really nice color. Yeah, this is, if I was having someone over who's never had tea really before, this is the tea I would offer them. Because this is just the prettiest tea and it looks the nicest and it tastes you know, there's not a ton going on with it. It's a very easy tea. You don't get many steeps out of it, though. Typically, I'll get like 10 steeps out of a tea before I finish it. Um, but these black teas typically, just in general, because they're so strong in flavor, will tend to run out of that flavor a lot faster. So that's something to keep in mind if you were to do that. Also, any teas I bring out that are in this silver bag come from a website called Yunnan Sourcing. Uh, they ship, I'm pretty sure worldwide, they have a US site that I tend to use more often just because the shipping is cheaper, but they also have an international website where they can ship anywhere, I th basically any anywhere you can ship from China, basically. Uh, they have a lot of actually curated tea sets that if you wanted to try getting into this style of tea, it's I think it's like $50 you get seven or eight different teas in it, including this one, actually. You also get the Bailo Chun, uh, but you get a bunch of different teas so you can try them all, find out what you like, and yeah, it's actually written on the packet. See? Yunnansourcing.com. It's on the very bottom there, next to my order number. <laughs> Don't look at the order number too hard. Next up, we have Fengking Yixing Hongcha Wild Tree. Yeah, these Chinese names I'm not great at. Um, but this is Wild Tree Purple Black Tea. Purple tea is a style of black tea uh, that's, I'd say, the thing that... I haven't had that much purple tea. This is actually, like, the only purple tea I've ever really had, other than a pretty bad purple tea. But this, for the record, you know, it's not actually... Oh, shit. I just lost some of that. I'll go pick that up when I'm done. As you can see, it's not really purple. Oh, someone just came in. We just came in. Folksy do. Hi, Folksy. I should move this thing down below the alerts. Hang on. Hi, Folksy. Welcome in. Hi. Welcome. I'm trying to find my alert box and move it below this fucking thing. Here we go. Okay. Hi, Folksy. How did the drawing go? Did you finish it? Sort of? Were you able to finish or is it still sort of need some stuff? 
But welcome in, welcome to... We're reviewing teas and celebrating hitting affiliate. Uh, right now we're talking about this purple tea. You did finish, nice. I can't wait to see the finished piece whenever you get around to uploading it. But that's great. If you did that, like start to finish on stream, my God. Crazy, thank you. Yeah, we're, there's a couple of redeems. Not very many though. Uh, and they're all pretty expensive. I I was considering getting tits, honestly, like right before stream. Uh, but I was like, it's $15. I feel like I'd rather spend that money on a game, <laughs> you know? Oh, what the fuck? Foxy! <laughs> Foxy! <laughs> thank you. Oh my God. Thank you for subbing. I haven't set up subs yet because I didn't think anyone was going to sub. <laughs> Thank you for subscribing. Oh my god. Also, this tea menu is still too fucking high. <laughs> Get off of my shit. Moving my thing all the way to the top. Okay. Oh, thank you, Bogsy. And now you've got access to... All the emotes, which let me actually post the emotes in chat for folks to see. I can't even see my own emotes. It, my Twitch chat screen is so tiny. Yes, it's the, it's the fucking, what is it? It's the, it's the GIF emote that it took me way too long to make. Oh, it doesn't show animated emotes in restream chat. That kind of sucks. Oh, oh, but yes, there's... Lots of emotes for anyone who wants to sub. There's also two free follower emotes that everyone should be able to use, which is the uh, sort of circular staring emote and the big sniff emote for when I offer everyone uh, some tea to sniff. I don't have a guy one lid right now, but you know, in the future when I brew tea and when I offer you a lid, I'll probably brew one of these teas at the end of stream and everyone can take a big old sniff of then. But yes, so these, uh, what was I saying? Purple tea. This is purple tea. Purple tea is a lot like black tea. It has a very similar flavor profile, except it is... Oh my god, I didn't even introduce myself. Hi Raiders, I'm Glock. I <laughs> I play games from before most people were probably born. <laughs> I play a lot of retro games. Like, uh, I'm playing the Resident Evil remake right now, and also Metal Gear Solid. And next week, here's a little spoiler, I'll give for next week's streams. Next week, I'm gonna be starting a classic Resident Evil 4 randomizer run. So I play a lot of old games. Uh, I hope you will, and also obviously do a lot of tea stuff. I hope you will enjoy your time. But speaking of tea, here is the tea menu for today. This is every tea we're gonna be reviewing today. As you can see, there's quite a lot of them. We've got a lot of blacks, a lot of darks, a lot of greens, a ton of oolongs and puars. But yeah, this is what we're reviewing today. I'll pull up that menu anytime someone wants it. But uh, yeah, so purple tea, the biggest difference I can describe for purple tea between normal purple, between black tea and purple tea is that purple tea almost tastes, it's sweeter slightly, and I'd say it's juicier. And that's a really weird word to use, but it feels like drinking purple tea has a sort of flavor and textural experience similar to like biting into a really ripe pear. It's just your mouth is full of juice. It's a re I can't describe it because you just have to try it for yourself to know what I'm talking about. It makes sense. Okay, good. It also tastes a bit of lychee, which I've heard could. That's again this specific uh, purple tea. I have. Uh, and part of that could be that it was just near lychee trees when it was harvested, because that will affect heavily the flavor of eat is what's around them. Like if there's a fruit or apricot tree or lychee tree anywhere near a tea tree, that tea tree will sort of absorb some of the flavors of that fruit. Uh, it's really interesting how it works. You can really get into teas super heavily like that. But yeah, next up is, uh, let's do another purple tea actually. This is from a little tea shop in, uh, I picked this up when I visited Minneapolis last uh, December, I think. From a little tea shop there. Uh, this is not very good. <laughs> this is another purple tea. I don't have to empty this out because it's just in a wrapper so I can just pull out. This is a whole cake. A lot of tea comes pressed 
Uh, traditionally, tea will come pressed into cakes like this. Hang on, here we go. Into cakes like this, where, uh, you know, it's a really easy way to pack it to be shipped. Tea is underrated. It is so cool. You can get so into tea. I got so into tea. I've spent hundreds on tea. It's too much. I need to stop. <laughs> but this sort of cake is how a lot of tea will be packed and shipped out of China because it, you can stack tea like this. Uh, you can like stack multiple cakes on top of each other in something called a tong, which is usually made of bamboo. And that makes it super easy to ship just a massive quantity of tea. And this is compressed, but once you break off a piece of this cake, like if I were to, I think this, sh I should be able to just, no, I can't, this is pretty, diff oh no, I got it, okay. So like, I can just break off a piece, and then you would take this, throw it in the guy one, and you'd drink that, and oh, here we go. Another little thing is that they will usually have little papers like this pressed into them as well, that uh, brand the tea. That's how you know who made it? What manufacturer, what farmer made the tea? Uh, this is pressed by, like I said, this is not a very good tea. <laughs> this is kind of bland and not super flavorful. It's not nearly as juicy as the other tea I showed off, which is unfortunate. Uh, but, you know, it is... Uh, if you ever see a tea in a cake like this, uh, it's not worse than loose leaf tea. It is just as good, honestly, you know, being in a cake like this can be kind of misleading. Like, it's not a guarantee it's going to be super good tea from China. But, you know, it is, it's just another way to pack tea, basically. Next up is this. As you can see, this, it says on the wrapper, Thousand Year Tree Wild Red Tea. Red tea and black tea are the exact same thing. In China, it's called red tea. In the West, it's called black tea has to do with the color of the tea. The leaves are black, but the tea itself is red. And this I got from a online tea shop uh, for about $40. Here we go, I'll just pick it up and show you. Here we go, as you can see, I've taken quite a lot of it. Uh, this was about $40 for 50 grams, and it was not worth it at all. <laughs> this is perfectly fine tea. You know, it tastes good, but it is not $40 good. It was way overcharged because of the ancient tree uh, denominator. And so that's something to look out for if you end up getting into tea, is to watch out. Like I said, ancient tree tea is hard to track exactly how old it is. Uh, so you don't necessarily want to just buy because it says it's ancient tree. You know, that's not the best way to shop. And it can result in you getting tea that's not as good as you're being charged for. Yeah, it's sad sometimes. But then my last black tea is another ancient tree. I have a lot of ancient tree black tea, mostly just because that's what people tend to sell. But this is from a completely different tea shop too. This is from a Dragon Tea House. Uh, they are an online shipper, much bigger than Yunnan Sourcing just because they have, they source their teas from a bunch of different places. So you can get a ton of different kinds of teas and as you can tell by the stickers, I got this uh, around Christmas time. <laughs> but this comes packed up pretty tightly, actually. Let me get it out and show you. Uh, here we go. So this came in this little wrapper. And then, as you can see, this is a pretty massive fucking sack of tea. But I will uh, just get some of it out. And you can see, actually, one of the things that differentiates kinds of teas... Oh god, that's way too much. Hang on. Let's, let's get all that back in. Here we go. One thing that differentiates these kinds of teas is the shape of the leaf. Like, this has been rolled into a sort of stick, where others, like the Bai Lo Chen, was rolled into a ball. And so that's one... Oh, I just dropped a bunch of it. This was really expensive tea. I kind of don't want to lose any of it. <laughs> But, you know, like this, you can see it's going to be shaped differently. But you can see, because this is also a black tea, it has that sort of uh, golden black color to it that the Bai Lo Chen had. This is really nice. This is rolled into a little snail. Yeah, isn't it cute? They love calling it snail tea. That, that's one thing. Places will randomly call it by the translation or by the original Chinese name. Again, not an indicator of quality, just how they chose to do it. 
one thing I'd be worried about is if they don't list specifically where the tea is from. Like, you know, if they can't list the exact province the tea is from or, you know, the mountain or anything, if they can't list that specific information, there's a good chance it's not going to be best tea just because they probably got it secondhand. Um, sometimes they'll rename teas so it can be hard shopping in the West, but it's good tea regardless. Yeah, this is probably the most different tasting um, black tea I've had. Myanmar has a very... I'm not sure what it has, actually. I've never looked into it, but this does taste significantly different from the other two sort of plain, normal black teas I've gotten. Very good, though. This has a nice, smooth flavor. Black tea in general. At the end of this, we'll, I'll take... You know what? I'll actually take some of this. We'll take a tiny bit of this. Safe. Go get a good When we're done here, I will serve up some. We're just gonna we'll steep it super quick. And just you know, this is a good chance for me to show off my guy one. Hang on. Go get a bunch of these things. Get some of these things. Okay. Get my guy ones. For this one, we will. I'll try to only use my light colored guy wands for this, just so you can see the color more easily. But I've got four different guy wands, so we can have four different teas before we inevitably have to shift. Yesterday was shit, and today's busy. Needed this. Oh, I'm glad I can help you relax a little bit with the teas. But yes, so I'm going to take this guy wand and just throw in this tea. And we will steep a tiny bit of this. Oh, can you see it? Yeah, you can sort of see it. We will steep a tiny bit of this at the end of the black tea. Actually, I think this is the last black tea, so we can steep some of this right now. Hang on, let me put everything back into this. This bag is the only sort of bad thing. I cut this really bad. A lot of these bags will come pre-sort of perforated, like with a little slot for you to tear into. I do not recommend using that slot. It's going to make a really awkward tear that's going to make pouring tea out of it really difficult. I would recommend just taking a pair of scissors and completely cutting off this top piece here. It's going to make it so much easier to store and just much easier to deal with, much easier to pour out. Uh, there are tools you can get, uh, like, hang on, I'll go get some of them actually and show it off. Um, hang on, give me a sec. Uh, you can get... Oh, I'm gonna show this. You can get tools like this. These are... I'll start having it. I'm also getting a filter. <laughs> Lots of things I wanted to grab to make this. Um, you can also, what was I saying? I was talking about the tool teas. Tea tools, that's right. Um, I don't know exactly what this is called. I really should. But this is like a scoop you can use to get teas out. I'll use this a lot of the time if I don't feel like weighing my teas. Uh, I'll use this. And then this is a pour knife, which is how you would usually open uh, cakes like this or bricks of tea when they're pressed tighter and I do actually have some tea bricks I'm about to show off but first I wanted to just get this black tea shown off so like I said you can see it here some nice black tea this is a guy one I received this was my second ever guy one I got this as a Christmas gift from somebody I no longer speak to so you know not the greatest memories associated with it but the thing with this guy one, you know what? Actually, while that heats up, just because you're not going to be able to hear me as easily, I'm going to grab my tea pets. Tea pets. Tea pets are kind of just a cute little thing to pour leftover teas and tea washes out onto. Um, there's a tradition behind them that I'm not super privy to. Uh, something about leftover porcelain being used for it, but they're cute, they look nice, and they are fun. So that's why you have a tea pet. Anyway, let me adjust my camera a bit. Francis, yeah, it's Francis. Francis, uh, the rat is turbo, named by my good friend Celeste. 
And the tea bunny, this was actually my first tea pet. This one is named Chat because you know, I'd feed the tea bunny and it was like I was feeding Chat, you know? It was a really nice, just a fun little way to do it. But yeah, uh, this water is gonna take another second just to heat up. But I've got all my guy ones out. Yippee, yeah! Uh, you know, let me actually really quickly. Hang on. Let me jump into Twitch really quick and drop the price of feeding the tea bats. Just because I think it's pretty expensive. Right? Like, what is it at? I think it's expensive right now. I think it's like 500 right now, which is a lot. I shouldn't have made it that high. I don't know exactly how to price this. I don't know how to price things, so I've never done this before. <laughs> Hang on, here we go. Uh, feed the tea pet. Yeah, that's 500. That's a lot. I'm going to lower that to 300 so that folks can actually maybe afford it. You're 20 from 500? Oh, well, now you can afford it regardless because now it is only... You might have to refresh, but now it is only uh, 300. Okay, so let me get this. Typically... Oh, yep, there we go. All right, feed the tea pet. So... Um, typically, you would use, uh, most guy ones come around 100 milliliters, and you would want to use 5 grams of tea or 100 millimeters of water. Uh, obviously, there's not very much tea in here, so I'm not going to do 100 milliliters. Only going to do also, a very traditional thing is a wash, which is where you basically pour off the first steep of tea. You only do a couple seconds for this one. Uh, you know, you'll do... Uh, it depends on the kind of tea, too. If it's a compressed tea, you'd want to do like 30 seconds, but if it is a tea like this... Hang on, I'm going to just move these around. Uh, but if it's a tea like this, where it's already loose leaf, uh, you will want to do a much shorter tea. Like, basically, pour the water over it and then immediately dump it off. Or pour it off, as it is. This is going to be pretty strong. But you can see the color. This is the first tea, too. And so now we're going to feed the tea pet. And since you voted to feed the tea pet, uh, you get to choose which one we feed first. I can guess which one you want to feed first, though, because everyone always wants to feed the same one first. But Lux, who do you want to feed first? Who's getting the first sippy of tea? Who's getting, who's getting the first sippy? Who gets it? Who gets it? Oh, wait, that's right. I totally forgot. Also, when we do the wash, hang on, we'll do this after I feed the tea pet. Squ squirrel. Oh, the squirrel. Oh, oh, you mean Turbo. Turbo's actually a rat. A rat represents good luck in China. That's why there's one list sort of underneath it. It's a sack of money. We're going to feed Turbo first then. Big, drinky, then we'll feed Chat. Then we'll feed Turbo. Or the rest of this cup. Oh, it's fine. It's easy to make the mistake. But there we go. Okay. And then also, there is, because we don't drink it, but a lot of the uh, sort of aromatic oils and compounds on the tea are washed up in this first steep. So we use this first steep to sniff the lid of the guy one. So there's an emote for it. So, oh yeah, that smells great. So here you go, chat. Feel free to take a big old sniff of tea. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You can have a nice big, nice big. <laughs> nice big old sniffer. But I will go ahead and pour second steep now. And the second steep is the one we're really gonna drink. Now this is the one that's sort of more flavorful. And so, this is the first one we will be sipping. Go sniff, yeah. Go sniff. Oh, and you can sniff again. Nice, yeah, this has a very sweet smell to it. Which is why it's one of my favorite black teas, but I also don't have much of it. And uh, the Dragon Tea House takes a very, very long time to ship. I think it took me almost... I. Should they offer free shipping, which you should not take. 
Uh, they're free shipping. It will take like two months to get to you. Uh, I paid like $12 for shipping and it took about a month and a half to get to me. So, you know, but regardless, here, the first three. Oh, go perfectly sized for one cup. No, I think you're giving me a T hyperfixation. Yeah, right. It's really easy to fall into it. It's too easy to fall into it, actually. I fell into it super easily. Very dangerous. Be careful. <laughs> but here we go. Cheers, chat. Mm. Yeah, that's a really nice tea. That tastes great, honestly. I'm also going to do a super quick one last steep with this one. Uh, just because I'm not going to use up these leaves, really. Oops. So that's going to be a longer steep. I'll let that sit for like, I don't know, two minutes. Cheers, yeah, cheers. Hang on. I should get, I can get a second. Hang on, let me get another cup. I'll get a second cup so chat can have some tea because I have these tiny cups. that are actually a set with this guy walk. Uh, these are my tiny, tiny little teacups. I will pour some off of here into that. And you can see the color a bit better too in these cups. They're sort of whitish. Yes, so this is... Oh! Witch! Hi! Oh my god! <laughs> Second raid today! Oh god, I haven't shouted out anyone. Okay, hang on. Let me shout some people out. Witch! Hi! Welcome! How did your stream go? How was, how was finishing up Cult of the Lamb? Welcome to... We're reviewing teas right now. Uh, right now we're talking about... Uh, specifically, I'm showing off... Hang on. Oh, there's tea in there. I almost just opened that and pointed it towards the camera. I would have gotten so much boiling water on myself if I did that. <laughs> hang on, let me shout you out. Uh, shout out... Did I spell your name right? Oh, I messed that up. I did two exclamation points. Hang on. Try that again. Did I do it right that time? I don't think I did it right that time. Terrible. <laughs> but welcome, witch. Welcome, raiders. Would have been quite the scalding review of the day. Yeah, it would have. My god. Would have been terrible. How do I shout out? Why isn't this working? Is that, am I doing the command wrong? I, I feel like I am. <laughs> Hi, welcome. You have to do slash shout out. <sighs> there. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Everyone go follow Wonder Witch if you're not already. Her content's great. Which I don't know if you have to uh, work today. If you do, thank you so much for the raid. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, <laughs> if you don't, I hope you can enjoy some tea with us here. You can... Uh, there's a free emote for followers uh, that is just a big old sniffer. Just a big sniff, so you can take a big sniff of this lid, tea lid. It's got lots of aromatic compounds from it. Right now we are drinking this uh, premium Myanmar ancient tea black, uh, ancient tree black tea. I keep forgetting, yes, big sniffer. Big sniffer of the tea lid. And there's also a bunch of tea-related redeems, including one to feed the tea pets, which are these little guys. These are the tea pets. This is Turbo, this is Chat, and this is Francis. Uh, if you want to feed the tea pets, it's 300 points, and we give them a little drink. This is Chat's cup, too. This is a cup just for Chat to drink. And this is my cup. Oh, feed the tea pet. There we go. All right, we're going to feed... Which, which one do you want to feed? Do you want to feed Francis? Do you want to feed um, Chat? Or do you want to feed Turbo? We're going to feed all of them regardless, but you get to choose who gets fed first. Mm. Chat? Okay, chat, here you go. Here's your sip of tea. Ooh. Ooh. Then Sir Turbo. Then for Francis. And yeah, that was the... Myanmar black tea. Hang on, I'm going to pour off this last steep. This guy one is actually a travel guy one. It is supposed to fit cups. It's supposed to fit these sort of light blue cups and this uh, chahai, which is the word for a pitcher, into it, which is very nice. It's nice. And then here is the tea we were drinking. And see, it's not very much because we were doing a lot of, uh, not a lot of water and a lot of steeps. Yes, very fancy, yes. Uh, but that is the end of this steep of 
uh, excuse me, this Steepa tea. Here is how long. Now this steeped for like several minutes actually. So this is a lot darker than the other one and it's also gonna have a much stronger flavor. So let me pour your cup chat first. Pour your cup first chat. I'm messing up all my words today. I don't know how or why. But then I'm going to just clean all this off. Quick. Just so that there's not too much lingering flavor when we do the next tea. Go. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and move this guy one. Oh, I'm going to set it here actually so I can dry it off real quick. I'm going to move it over here. All right. So. One last cup of tea, chat. Cheers. This one's for you, chat. This one's for me. Drink it from your big green cup. He oh, well, I would do, <laughs> I'd do uh, green tea next, but we have one more tea from the same uh, basket I keep everything in. So we're gonna do that actually. Oh yeah, this is much darker flavor if you give it the time to get there. Describe. It's depth. It tastes very different from other black teas you can get from China. You know, when you order teas from different provinces like this, they do tend to be very differently flavored. And they're not flavored. This is the flavor of these teas purely comes from the location, the altitude, uh, the surrounding plants, and the how old they are and how the farmers care for them. Uh, like I said earlier, ancient trees are trees that are specifically over 500 years old. So that's where you'll typically get the best tea from. But yep, that was our black tea. And then I'm going to go ahead and even though you didn't ask, I'm going to give chat one more drink through the tea cats. Then I'm going to clean these cups off just so we can reuse them for the next tea. Which I'm not gonna show off how this next tea tastes just because uh, this is one of my more expensive teas and it's just a bit harder to do. But anyway, uh, go ahead, clean this off. This is a good way to clean off a filter if you have one is to just pour it upside down and pour water over it. But the next tea to go over is our dark teas. Hang on, let's pull up the tea menu. This is the menu of all the teas we have for today. We just went through the black teas. Now we're going to go into the dark teas, which is right over here. And as you can see, there's only two dark teas I have. I don't have very many. Dark teas and green teas are kind of the thing that I'm sort of the newest to. But for now, uh, once again, from the Dragon Tea House, we have Quijang Flakes coin shaped dark tea. Oh, you have to go. Oh, don't worry, witch. I, I thank you so much for the raid. Thank you for coming by. Uh, I hope you have a good day if you have work or if you don't have work. I hope you just have a relaxing evening. Uh, and thank you so much. Yeah, like it. Here's the catching box you got. Thank you. Okay, so like I said, these, like the package said, oh, that reminds me actually, I totally forgot to shout out Folksy who raided me earlier. Hang on. I'm going to shout her out real quick. Folksy is an artist uh, who was just drawing actually some Dungeon Meshi fan art of a Farseal, far, <laughs> yeah, a Farseal of Phelan and Marseal. Uh, Folksy do, did I spell her name right? Yes, I did. Okay. Went to, went to the Philippines with your parents when you were seven. We saw a 700 year old tree. Yeah, tea trees look insane. They look great. But... This is the uh, dark tea coin. Now, I'm not gonna, uh, actually, I probably can open it, honestly, and then I'll just drink this later today. <laughs> That'll just be what I do. I'll open this and then I'll have it later. Um, hang on. So they've got this sticker on them and then you peel the sticker off and oh baby, look at that. It's a wan. It's a piece of Chinese currency a tea pressed into it. This has sort of golden flakes in it that are, I believe, a kind of fungus, actually. 
and that fungus is extremely good when added to tea. You can see it's got, like, look how detailed this is. Like, you can make out the characters so easily. I don't know what they say because I can't read Chinese, but isn't it just so cool? Like, the lengths people go to make their tea look nice, to make it taste good. It is gorgeous. Yes, it's so cool. I at least know this character down on the bottom here is the cha, which is tea. It's the only character I know, but I'm going to set this aside somewhere uh, and have it later now because it's open. Cannot open it. Luckily, compressed teas like this don't tend to lose their aroma super quickly just because of how tightly they're compressed. So at the very least, I do not have to worry about that running out of flavor. But yeah, that is a really good tea. The dark teas, like I said, I don't drink super often just because they are more expensive, with exception to this one, actually. This is one I just bought recently. This is, let me check the menu for exactly what the name is, because as you can see, this is, this wrapper is entirely in Chinese, so I can't read it. I'm trying to learn Chinese so I can read these, but Chinese is a very complicated language. So this is Mojin Fucha uh, from 2018. And by the way, aged tea is any tea that's aged, I believe, more than five years counts as aged tea. Uh, aged oolong is sort of prized. Aged raw puar is also very prized. But this is uh, what this looks like. I can, oh, let me make this smaller, actually, so you can see it a bit better. Here we go. So it comes wrapped up like this, and then the brick itself is sort of in here. You can see this, you'd have to use a puar knife to sort of break apart get out but this also is inoculated with flowers and mold very tasty <laughs> 10 year old box of lipton in your pantry is ht now um so yes no <laughs> the thing with lipton right lipton like all these teas i have like this brick was cheap was on the cheap side of teas at 18 dollars now, you probably hear paying $18 for tea and think, wow, that's fucking absurd. <laughs> Why would you pay $18 for tea? It's because of the quality and because of the loose leaf nature of it. You know, these are teas where you can find the exact farm they were grown and see its reputation. And it's very, you know, the whole leaf tea is pretty special, but part of what makes it so much more expensive is that Lipton teas really any bag tea you get is going to be uh, sort of crushed up tea dust, quote unquote, because the particles, the tea is crushed so finely so that it can be sold very cheap. You know, like when I pour out one of these bags of tea, it's going to uh, sort of produce a dust from the sediment at the bottom. And that dust is essentially all you're getting with a bag of tea is the dust. Uh, it is... Yes, I love tea too. Also, hi Aqua, welcome in. I'm going to this special tea session and slash affiliate celebration. Uh, we are reviewing teas. Um, there's a free follower emote for people who want to sniff the tea. Uh, but yeah, that was my black teas and my dark teas. Uh, next up on the menu. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's very nice. Learning so much about tea. Oh, there's, I don't even know that much about tea. There's so much. Tea is such an endless expanse of things you can learn. Like my old tea lady who I used to buy tea from was a registered and certified tea sommelier, which means she could tell the difference. She could tell where tea was from based on taste alone. Like she could tell what mountain it was from or... She could tell the if it rained the week before it was picked because of the flavor of it. Like, it, there is so, so much to learn about tea. It's, it's just crazy. It's an absolutely insane thing. But next up is my green teas. I have so m Oh my god, you don't... Yeah, this is every tea I have. There's a ton. How many is this, actually? I haven't counted. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20... 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. I have 38 teas. And 
I consider that to be not very many. <laughs> you know, there's a lot, but only have oolong and black tea. Yeah, I mean oolong tea is pretty good. You know, even like sort of crappy oolong tea has a really nice flavor to it. But next up are my green teas. So as you can see here, I only have four green teas and two of them are actually the same tea. So we'll start with that one actually. Where is that? Yeah, here we go. So this is, no, that's not right. Here it is. This is my Bailo Chun uh, green tea from 2024. This most recent season, this was like just picked. You know, this was picked in the last month basically because spring just started. This is the very early tea, and this is last year's tea. So I'm gonna show you last year's tea, actually. I just took from your mom's cupboard. <laughs> like I said, almost all of these teas are from unonsourcing.com. They have very fair pricing. They ship worldwide for the most, I, I mean, you guys are in Europe, so they'll definitely ship to you. Shipping can be a bit expensive, unfortunately, but I consider it to be entirely worth it, just for how good it is, but anyway. Here is my green tea. Oh yeah, this is the perfect one to use because I can just drink this after. So this is a green Bailo Chun. As you can see, much like the black Bailo Chun, it is rolled into these little snail-shaped bowls. It's got dark and light patterns on it. And it's just very pretty. This is again, sort of the most, one of the most basic. I don't even like saying the word basic. This is a delicious tea. I love this tea. This is my favorite green tea that I have. Yes, snail, more snail tea. But this is my favorite green tea that I have. It's so good. It's got this tote, it, because Chinese green teas, if you drink Japanese green teas, like if you like matcha, matcha is a steamed tea that is then pressed and it gives it a very specific, it gives it that very specific matcha flavor. Chinese green teas are roasted over charcoal usually. So they have this very deep roasty flavor it's kind of unlike anything else I've had. You know, it is fantastic. I absolutely recommend trying it. You know, if you're gonna buy one, again, Yunnan Sourcing has their uh, starter tea set for $50. It has this tea in it. It has the 2024 version, so it's even fresher because one thing about green tea, you know, most teas like Puar tea, dark tea, and some black and oolongs will get better with age. You know, especially if they're allowed, if a tiny amount of oxygen and air is allowed in with them, they will sort of get even better with time. You know, there's specific kinds of tea vessels you can keep them in to age better, but most teas get better with time. Green teas do not. Green teas, because they are so fresh, will lose their fragrance and flavor as time goes on. So you really want to drink them as quickly as you can. So like I said, this is a 2023 tea. So I'm actually going to set this up right now to have. We will drink that later. And yeah, and that's this bag finally done. I'm glad I could finally get rid of that. I have a friend who's too special interest in snails. She's got two giant African snails. Ooh, that's cool. I've never heard of having pet snails. That's, I've never even seen, what do African snails look like? Hang on, I'm gonna look that up. A giant African snails. Snail. Oh, those things are fucking big. My God. <laughs> My God. Wow. That seems like it'd be a cool pet. That seems neat. Wow. All right. Well, everyone's got interests. Like I said, everyone, I feel like everyone needs to have an interest they're really weird about because <laughs> it, it just helps. It makes you feel better. Yes, too. That's crazy. All right. But yeah, that and this. This is just the 2024 version, so it's a bit fresher. And this is another 2023. This is Laoshan Green Tea from Shandong 2023 again. So this is a bit old. But let me open it up and you can see the difference between this and the Bailo Chun. This is sort of curled of tea instead of balls. You know, they kind of look like hairs almost. Uh, they're really nice, very fragile. I haven't had this one in a while, so I can't remember the exact taste, but it's hard to get a green tea that's going to be bad. You know, almost all green tea will be very tasty. You won't get very many steeps out of it. Green tea is sort of more fragile with its aroma, so I'd say this would be good for maybe four or five steeps. 
Similar to the green teeth, actually. Or sorry, similar to the black teeth. Uh, you don't get a ton of steeps, but you get very good steep from it. And then the final tea I have to show is another one. Oh, stretch. Oh, thank you, Lux. I probably have been kind of sitting weird here. Okay. Do a little... Oh, hour one. Has it been an hour already? God. Okay. Oh. Oh, wow. That's nice. I, I don't think I ever stretch during streams, actually. I'm glad I added that. Wow. That feels really nice. <laughs> God, I should probably stretch more during streams, huh? Sitting in place, especially during these long streams. My God, that Metal Gear stream went on for like seven and a half hours, and I only got up once during it. That is not good. Yeah, let's check out. Oh, it smells like candy. It smells so good. Yeah, I'll actually use my uh, little scoop to get this out. But here's the Laoshan. Is this Laoshan? No, what is this? What is this again? This is Maofang. You can see, once again, completely different. It looks very similar to the snail teas, except it's in strips instead of balls. This is a much lighter tea. Um, you know, this, if you want to get a strong flavor out of it, uh, malty, that's what it is. Green tea, Chinese green teas have a malty flavor. That's fantastic. It's delicious. It's incredible. I've been drinking a lot of green teas since I got so much from the spring 2024 batch, but yeah, now is the time. If you want to get good green tea, now is the time because the batches, the harvest just happened. It is the perfect time to get green teas. Just incredible. <laughs> But yeah, this is Malfang. This is a much lighter tea. This is going to give you lighter flavor unless you steep it for longer or use more of it. And frankly, you get so, like, look how big this fucking bag is. This is a massive bag of tea. And you can get so much out of it. Or just even just a quick rip. But anyway, now let's check what my water temperature is at and we will brew up some of this green tea and everyone can have a big old sniff of it. I can also talk about my next guy wad that I'm about to get out. Hang on. Let me find it here. Also, with green teas, you really want to make sure. Green teas, you want to be completely airtight. You want these to be sealed, because they will lose their aroma very quickly. But anyway. Whoops. Oh, shit. That was my long just got knocked over. Whoops. Okay, so here is the guy one I'm gonna be using. Hang on, let me set it down. Here's the guy one. Here's the tea inside the guy one. You can see this is a sort of similar. Oh, my tea's done boiling. Okay. Uh, with green tea, especially Chinese green teas, you want the water to be at a pretty low temperature. So I have a kettle, an electric kettle that lets me control the temperature and you'd want a green tea to be around 175 to 180 in terms of temp. Otherwise it can uh, get a bit, what's it called? It can get bitter, which you don't want to have happen. But I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up halfway. I'm gonna let that steep for just a second and then pour it. You can see the first steep color for green tea is super duper light. Like this is really... Hang on, let me use this arm so it doesn't block my track. Like it's hard to almost... See. I feel like on camera it might be harder to see the sort of greenish tint it gives. But green, green tea will be very, very light in color like this. You know, it's not going to get super dark or yellow like a, a western brewed green tea would. We're gonna pour some out, and then we're gonna give some to the pets. There we go, I'm just gonna pour it over each of them, and then we'll give them the rest. So this next steep should be much darker. Here we go, good sippies for the pets. Now I'm gonna pour again. Oh, I completely forgot to let you guys smell the aroma. I'm so sorry. Do it for this next. 
But so this guy one, oh, sorry, I just bumped the mic. <laughs> so this guy one I'm using right now, I got from the old tea shop I used to frequent in New York. And a month before I moved, I went here and, you know, at the time the tea shop was also closing down tragically. So I, you know, went in and was like, hey, you know, uh, or the lady who ran the place was like, hey, I'm selling a bunch of my tea equipment. You know, consider taking some. And I'd been eyeing this guy one since I first walked into the shop. And so my immediate reaction was like, oh, I want that. I've got to take that guy one. It's so nice. Went home with it. And uh, now it is a very nice guy one, but tragically, actually, it's too thick. Like, hang on, here's a big, you can have a big sniff of the lid, everyone. And a big, <laughs> big, a big old sniff of that. Nice green tea scent. Nice big old green tea. Mm, yeah, definitely not as strong as the 2024 one. You can tell this has lost some of its fragrance. Schnorf, yeah, big schnorf. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, with this, there's... Anyway, what was I thinking? Yeah, the guy wants too thick. Basically, it's like... Um, uh, with a Gaiwan, you it's, there's a very specific thickness you want it to be. If it's too thin, heat is going to immediately escape from it, and you're going to burn your fingers on it. Uh, however, if it is too thick, it's going to be hard to hold. And this is in a weird spot where it's so thick that actually, if you let tea steep in it for longer than I'd say... God, I bumped the mic again. I'm so sorry. This is I need a better spot for my kettle. <laughs> I need to get like a side table where I can put my kettle or I just need a kettle with a longer fucking cord on it. <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and steep for real one time. But yeah. This one is kind of annoying because if it steeps for longer than I'd say even just 30 seconds longer, especially on higher temperatures like you need for darker teas. Uh, it just completely, I mean, it will burn the shit out of you. <laughs> it will burn your hands. It is almost impossible to even hold. And, you know, it's just, uh, it's just rough. You know, I don't use this, ex I basically only use this guy one for green teas actually, because of how hard it is to hold on higher temperatures. But anyway, here you go, chat. Our green teas. Uh, cheer. Cheers. Uh, here's your tea, chat. Ooh. Hmm. Very light. Very much lighter than the 2024 version. It's the way it loses its fragrance. It loses it very dramatically. And more dramatically than any other tea. Really. Like I've had teas where I accidentally left their bags open for a significant amount of time that did not lose their flavor as much as this did. Like green teas you really want to drink the year you get them. And it's really easy to as well because, you know, they have, they re-harvest these every year. You can get better tea immediately. You know, it is not hard to get to. But... Yeah, very light. Extremely light, even. It's, you know, it's good. It's not bad. It's still going to be better than, like, any green tea you can get in the American or even European supermarket. But it is, it's just, you know, not as good as it can be. And especially because, you know, sometimes a shop will offer green teas from the previous year on sale and you'll save maybe four or five bucks on it. I don't think it's worth it personally, because you really are getting such like a worse experience. Like pay the extra five dollars for the freshest green teas. You're gonna enjoy it. You're gonna have a good time with it. And it's gonna taste really good. You know, it's gonna taste better and it'll last longer. Like if you buy a green tea that's already a year out of date, then it's just gonna get even worse as time goes on, you know? Like, the tea that you th said, oh, well, oh, fuck, I just spilled it on myself. Shit. The tea that you said, oh, yeah, this is fine, you know, this tastes all right. Uh, 
a year later, it's going to taste like nothing. But if you buy the fresh tea, it's going to taste great. And then a year later, it's going to taste like that subpar tea you had got. You know, so if you're going to splurge, splurge on green tea. <laughs> There's one tea to splurge on. Because you can get cheap. Other teas you can get cheap and they'll be good. But green tea is really, it's just about the freshness that you have to take it out of. But anyway, I've had enough of that. So we're going to give it to the pets. And then let's pour out the final steep here. Oh, shit. This chai is not great. <laughs> it's a bit too wide. Anyway, there we go. You can see this is steeped for like a minute. You can see how much darker the color has gotten. You know, this looks much more like what you might get from supermarket green tea, you know, very dark sort of yellow color. There's Chad's portion. And then there's some for the pets. And uh, yeah. Oh, actually, with the Bailo Chun, you can see how this has completely sort of unfurled these leaves. Uh, look at how much bigger they've gotten, how much they've expanded. That's why uh, this... These things I've been pulling out, if you are not aware of what they are, these are called Gaiwans. They are... It translates to lidded cup. It is a Chinese vessel used for tea brewing, similar to a teapot. Uh, it's just slightly... You know, it's these two pieces, very similar. Uh, it comes down to the way you hold it is different. Uh, you'd want to have the lid skewed slightly like this so that there's a small gap here. And then you would put one finger on top to hold it. And you'd put two more fingers on the other side to hold it. And then your thumb would grip here to lift it like this. And then you'd pour sort of holding the lid like that. Or the way I tend to prefer holding it is Gaiwans will always come on a saucer like this. And so I like to just put my entire hand underneath the saucer and then my thumb on top. And this is this is not going to feel great at first. Like the first time you hold, um, excuse me, first time you hold a Gaiwan like this, it's going to feel unsecure and like it's about to fall out of your hand. It's not gonna, you just need a good grip on it. And then it's easier to pour. And even if the Gaiwan gets really hot like this one can, uh, you're not going to burn your fingers because you're not going to be touching the hot sides of it, you know? Anyway, once again, cheers, chat. Mmm, yeah. This is steeped way longer. The longer you steep green tea, if you have really short steeps for green teas, this is another thing about tea that's really fun, It's playing with steep times. Because a green tea, if you steep it for only, say, if you do like 10 second steeps each time, you're going to get a very light, sweet flavor from it. It's really nice. You know, it tastes, like I said, it's malty when you brew it super short times like that. It's got this very nice malty flavor. It's very light. You can get more steeps out of it that way, but you have to steep it for longer each time. When you steep the tea for a really long time, though, it gets... Hmm, it's slightly bitter, but it's like, in my opinion, it's a good kind of bitter. Like, I actually prefer green teas steeped a really long time to get this sort of slightly bitter note. I don't even think bitter is the right word. It's like... Hmm. It's hard to describe. I don't have the vocabulary to describe it, unfortunately. But it's... It's heavy on the palate. It coats your mouth. It feels thick. You know, where I said the purple tea was juicy, this is... I don't even know. I don't, I, like I said, I literally don't have the vocabulary to describe it. I, I need to get it. I need to get a better vocabulary so I can describe how good this tea is. Hmm. It is very good though. Oh yeah. Oh, that's one thing. If your green teas have started going off a little bit, getting a bit lighter, steep them for a long time, get that bitterness out of them. It's going to taste great. Sorry, chat. I'm going to actually take a sip of your tea, too. Oh, that's good. Over the bats. All right. That was green tea. I'm going to just wipe off the bottom of my guy one so it doesn't get my desk wet. And let's move on to the next tea. What is next on the menu? Next on the menu is white tea. Oh, boy. I like white tea. 
White tea is fun. So here's my white tea. And uh, so I'm going to start with this one, actually, because this isn't on the menu because there's almost none of it left. And it's not white tea I super love. This is by Mudan, uh, white peony. Um, this is not necessarily traditional white tea. This is more like, th this is a different kind of tea. Let me pop it open. Oh yeah. Ooh, ooh, that smells kind of funky actually. I wonder what happened. But this is kind of the last of this tea. You can see uh, the color is completely different from any of the other teas. It's kind of a mix between how the black teas and green teas look. You know, you have some of these very light colored leaves, but then you have some of the darker colored ones. White tea is, I'd almost describe it like a palate cleanser. You know, it has this very light, almost unoffensive flavor. Like, if you have someone who doesn't like tea, or who says they don't like tea, and you want to try to get them into a Chinese style of tea, white tea is the way to do it. You know, white tea, I think, is what you would... I feel like white tea is what you would expect tea to taste like. Right? You drink a white tea, and it's like, oh yeah, that's tea. You know? There's not... It's not jumping out at you with any super... I mean, it can jump out at you with pretty strong flavors, but it typically won't. You know, and this is by Mudan. This gets, this is very crumbly actually. Um, it's not fantastic. Yeah, you can actually see. This is what I was sort of talking about when I talked about tea dust earlier. This is what that's gonna look like, where it sort of coats the entire thing. It's very tiny flecks of tea. That's sort of what tea dust is. And that's why if you talk to someone who's big into Chinese teas, they'll refer to it as tea dust. Um, sort of, they probably don't mean it in an offensive way, but it does have slightly offensive connotations to it. Like, you know, it is worse tea by the standards of a regular tea drinker like this. You know, of all the teas I don't drink anymore, supermarket teas are at the top because... <laughs> I will still drink an Arizona iced tea sometimes, you know, because that's not tea to me. That's a soft drink. You know, that's like, oh, yeah, Arizona. I love this shit. Hell yeah, let's go. I love me in Arizona. Anyway, moving on. This is another tea cake that I got from that same shop when I went on vacation. Let me unroll it real quick. Yeah, there we go. So once again, you can see the color difference for white tea, almost sort of brownish. Again, very compressed. This is not a good tea. This tastes like nothing. Uh, I drink this. If I ever need a white tea for like a different drink, like a cocktail, or just if I ever need white tea as an ingredient in something else, this is the one I'll use because it's not particularly good. It's not particularly flavorful. It's very, it's like drinking water almost. It's not very good. Also white teas you can steep for a very long time without them getting bitter, which is nice. That's another benefit of them. They're good. I almost want to use the word beginner tea, but that doesn't feel right. That feels incorrect somehow. Next up are these, which um, I'm not going to open these, unfortunately, but these are mini tea bricks, and they are actually the same kind of tea as this. These are Shomei White Tea. These are really nice. These have a super sweet flavor to them. They smell very sweet too. Uh, like I said, I can't show you this one because they're individually wrapped like this. They came in a pack of, I think, four. I think these came in a pack of six. But the Dragon Balls, I can show you. Dragon Balls are a very cool kind of tea. These are actually called longevity balls, but it's the same general concept. It is a ball of tea tea that has been rolled tightly into a single ball like this and then wrapped up. These you can get so many steeps out of. You can get like 15 steeps out of one of these guys. Uh, you have to steam them when you make them unfortunately so you have to sort of uh, what's it called? You sort of have to oh I'm blanking on the word. Let me clean this while I think. Um, you have to sort of like cover them with the gaiwan lid and then let them just sit like that for a while. You know, it's it can be kind of annoying, 
but you know, the result is a delicious tea. These are also super easy to take with you places if you want tea on the go. Also, like I said, they smell like this bag they're full of. I like, you can have a look in there. This bag smells incredible on the inside. Like it smells like flowers and honey. It's just fantastic. White tea is such a treat. I really cannot recommend it enough. But then the next one I have is Ugar by Air Dried White Tea. This one is one of the, yeah, this is a younger white tea. So white tea, you'll see, yes, big sniffer. You will see that white tea sort of comes in different colors depending on its age. So get some of this out and I'll show you. You can see this actually kind of looks like that green tea I showed you earlier. You now it's very light in color. Oh, Kyle, thank you so much for following. My follow alert is still broken. Why is it not showing the image? Did I fuck that up somewhere? No, I'm gonna have to fix that, but thanks so much for following. Um, enjoy the free emotes. But like I said, this is sort of very, I'll actually, we'll use this one actually for the next tea. Hang on, let me get it out. Let me grab a guy one. Um, you will get a tea like this. When you have a white tea like this, you really want to use um, lower temperature so that it doesn't scald the tea or bring out the bitter notes of it too much. But the other thing is white tea is, I'd say the one tea that you can be really, really sure is not going to get super bitter when you brew it like that. White tea is really easy to not overbrew. Like even if you brew it for a really long time, it's not gonna get bitter. It's just gonna get stronger, which is great. Uh, next up, oh, this is actually, damn, this is a cake. This is Meng Song Village white tea. This was the first white tea I ever had. And it's one of my favorites. I should, probably should buy more of it, but it's a cake. You know, you can see here, there's just a little bit of the cake left. You can see by the color, this is a much older white tea. So this would use, you'd use a much higher temperature for this sort of tea. You know, you can see it's aged, it's oxidized a bit. It's sort of very, honestly, it kind of looks like a painting almost when you see it like this. Just a very nice tea. This is a very mild one. Again, this is one of the teas that you get from the starter set if you order it from the website. I'm not shilling this website, by the way. I'm not sponsored by them. It's just where I go to shop for tea for the most part. Uh, they are a reliable website. If you live in the US, they will do free shipping on orders over $50. And if you don't, then uh, their main website, Yunnan Sourcing Standard, uh, has a way bigger selection of tea anyways, and also monthly tea club boxes for like $40 each, $40 a month, and you get some you know, assorted teas shipped to your door. Pretty nice, in my opinion, at least. I've never done it, just because, you know, I don't really, when I get new teas, I like to go to a shop and look for them specifically. So I've never gotten there. Uh, tea boxes, but they, it, you know, if you want a new tea every month and you drink a lot of tea, it's a pretty good way to, you know, do that. But, uh, yeah. And, yeah, set back up. And I think I'm almost out of water, actually. But I've still got enough left. So we're going to go ahead and cook this tea next. And dump this out. So, like I said, this is the air-dried white tea from 2023. I mean, all my white teas are from 2023, I think. You can see, much like a green tea, it's got that sort of very light young color. Yeah, doesn't smell like much right now. But we will get into that in just a minute. But that was all my white teas see here yep the mount isla white was the cake i just showed off but it seems like next up is the oolong tea which is oops that's heating a bit more than i want okay so let's go ahead and pour this off you want a really quick wash for these only a couple seconds 
Otherwise, you run the risk of um, what's it called? You will run the risk of it losing too much flavor. This is already steeped for too long. But right off the bat, you can see the color of these is pretty different. Hang on. You can see the color is instantly much darker. This sort of, I'd say this is almost the color you'd expect a green tea to be actually. You know, it's very light, very flavorful, frankly. But yeah, it's just a good tea. You know, white teas are gonna be like that where they're really light. Also, I feel like I haven't explained why I'm pouring off the first steep of tea every time. That's called a wash. Uh, in the style of tea I'm making right now, which is called Gong Fu tea, or Kung Fu tea as it's translated to, um, the idea is to get very good tea in very small quantities so you can appreciate each steep and so you can appreciate the progression of the tea as a flavor. So you're going to get, say, you wash the first steep to sort of clean the leaves and also to remove some of the caffeine and to basically get past the first steep, which is going to be the weakest steep of tea. This is just a general tip for tea, actually. If you're using a loose leaf tea like this... Ah, oh, Stella, hi! Oh my god, thank you so much. Hi, Stella, welcome in. Welcome to the tea stream. We were just talking about the science, or not the science, the reasoning behind pouring off the first steep of tea. It's like I was saying, when you pour it off, this is something you can pour off tea basically anytime you're using any loose leaf tea that isn't super finely crushed. Like if you have any tea that's sort of a good size like this, you can do a first steep that's only like five seconds long, pour it off and the tea will be better for the next time. Don't do it if you have bag tea like Lipton. It's gonna be pointless to do that. Uh, you just, but if you have really good loose leaf tea, it's a good practice. Also, oh my god, hi Stella, welcome in. Welcome to the stream, oh my god. There's a, uh... oh yeah, right? And now here is, oh, that smells great. And like I said, there's a free follower emote for folks who wanna sniff the lid of this little guy one. If you want a little, <laughs> want a little sniff of that, you can take a whiff of the lid. You can see there's a bit of tea stuck on it actually. But very tasty smelling, very good smelling. I'm going to go ahead and do the next steep. I think I'm gonna have to refill my, yeah, I actually have to refill my kettle immediately. So I will do that. Big sniff, big sniff. This kettle is empty. So we won't be able to do a really long steep. So I'll actually make this a sort of mid-length steep. We'll steep this for slightly longer than I would normally. Uh, so we'll do maybe 30 seconds for this. But the point of brewing tea like this is to get the most out of each steep. And so you can taste, you know, where the tea is when you first brew it and then where it is five steeps later and how the flavor develops as the teas get more saturated with water. Or as the leaves get more saturated with water. It's really nice practice. And also, if you don't drink your tea super quickly, like if you really take your time with tea, then it's also good because each cup is gonna be so small that you don't run the risk of your tea going cold. And then that's just it, your tea's cold. The only way to bring it back is to microwave it. And that's like kind of weird to do, I feel like. But yeah, here is our white tea. Steep looking nice. Here's Chad's cup, here's my cup. Yeah. Cheers, chat, enjoy the tea. Mm, yeah, you could steep this for like, I feel like you could steep this for like 10 minutes and it would not get even slightly bitter. White tea is very floral. White tea is, I think, closest to herbal teas in terms of these. I mean, herbal tea is obviously something completely different, but it's closest in terms of flavor. Like it really does, I feel like white tea is going to be the most affected by what's around it like by what plants are around it, by what pollinators are around it. You know, it's going to be heavily influenced by that because of just how floral it is. That's also why, actually, I'll do this, hang on. I'm gonna step away for a sec. 
to get more water because there is one thing I want to show off that I do sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. So, I want to show off is something you can do with any tea, really, but especially white teas, because they benefit so much from it. Uh, one thing that's traditionally done with white teas is adding chrysanthemum flowers and goji berries, which sort of makes it even more floral and more sweet through the addition of, like I said, dried goji berries. I have these... Uh, I bought these at my local Chinese supermarket. You can get these at any Asian grocer, honestly. Goji berries make a good addition to any tea, not even just, um, you know, not even just white teas. If you have, you know, Lipton at home, you can get a bag of goji berries for like 10 bucks and just throw a couple into your Lipton and it will impart a nice fruity sweetness to it. Nice fruity sweetness to it. I forgot how to talk. I'm so sorry. Yeah. This is what dried goji berries look like. A lot of the times in the West, these are sold. Goji berries are sold sort of uh, dried and so covered in chocolate as a candy snack. Uh, this isn't really like that, <laughs> you know? Taking notes, oh, I'm glad. But yeah, this isn't really like that necessarily. Oops, that fell out. But it is very good regardless, you know? And you know, like I said, by just adding these into your tea, you can impart a little extra sweetness and fruitiness to it. That's what I like to do. Like, like I said, this white tea is not very good. That's what I like to do with that white tea because it can, it, it can be act almost like a blank canvas, depending on, not all white teas are going to be like that though. Some white teas, you will really want to taste the individual sort of parts of it. You know, you don't want to necessarily have it, um, what's it called? You don't necessarily want it to have different flavors. I personally only do this with teas that I don't love on their own. Like, because teas are going to be very good just all on their own regardless, you know? Yeah, that's good. Sorry, chat, I'm taking a sip of your tea. Sorry about that. There you go, chat. Yeah. You can get... There is a mountain of variety with the teas you can drink and the teas you can get. Uh, this is like, just to an insane point. Uh, you know, like I said, mountains, altitudes, regions of China, provinces. It's sharing is caring, that's right. I love sharing tea. Now there's a redeem where I can share tea with the tea pets anytime, even if I'm already drinking. I'll still get a sip. But also, I am very sorry about the sound of my kettle. I promise I'm working on getting a new kettle and also a separate space for the kettle. So it's not making this much noise every single time. But yeah, tea's fun. Tea's exciting. Tea, I wish I had people to share tea with. I wish I, I mean, I have you guys to share to you with, obviously, but also, you know, in person. Hmm. Here's something interesting. This is the, um, this is the black tea I made at the very start of stream. And as you can see, some of it pulled at the bottom and I thought, hmm, that looks interesting. I took a sip of it. Horrible. <laughs> Terrible. Disgusting. Extremely bitter. Like the tannins have just leached out. Super, super bitter. Like, to the point where I would not drink this. I mean, you could easily just re-steep this and it would be fine. But that's sort of the danger of steeping teas like this, like really good teas like this for too long, is that you do run a very clear risk of it getting too bitter. And that's kind of what'll happen to just normal teas. Like, you know, a Lipton or any bag tea. If you steep it for like, 10 minutes or something, it will just be 
way too strong, it'll get bitter. It's not gonna be particularly good, but that's typically not an issue that is had with Chinese teas, just because the quality, like I said, is miles better. But while that steams, I will go ahead and move this and yeah, let's refer back to the tea menu. Uh, that was all the white teas, which means next up there are the oolong teas, of which there are a lot. Um. <laughs> oh god, excuse me. Drinking all this tea is getting me a bit. Oof. Drinking all this tea is getting me a little bit. I'm sorry. I also haven't really eaten today. I had noodles, and that was it. <laughs> Hang on, let's... Uh, let me reduce that a bit just so I can see things better. Okay, so I want this to steep for a while. But you can see... Oh, I just burnt my finger. <laughs> Danger of using a guy one is it can get too hot for you to hold and you can accidentally... Some boiling water can slip off and hurt you. Or ask a woman her age clock or how many long teas they have. That is true. That is true. Real. So real. But if, like I was saying, if you didn't want to um, use a guy one, uh, but you wanted to still do gong fu brewing, you could do, uh, you could use a gong fu teapot like this. That's much smaller. You know, you can see this is, I think this is slightly lower quantity than... Yeah, you can see it's roughly the same size as my guy one, but uh, this is brass. Oh yeah, I didn't actually talk about this guy one. This was the first guy one I ever got. I ordered this guy one along with the tea starter set I got. It was my first guy one. It's one of my favorites, honestly. Like the shape and the hold, the thickness. This is just my favorite guy one. It's so easy to use. It's so nice. It's so pretty. I love it. You know, I love all my guy ones, just some I do love slightly more than the other. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, I think it's probably steeped long enough at this point. We'll pour it out. Oh yeah, look at that color. Look how much darker that got so quickly. There's a lot of ways to make tea. You'll see. Here we go, Jeff. This doesn't smell like much anymore, unfortunately. Goji berries will compromise the smell and the scent of whatever tea you use, so that is something to be careful about. Um, but, you know, here's the color of it. You can see how dark yellow it's gotten. Almost gold colored, actually. But, pour that out. And then the goji berries take quite a while, so I'm not sure if the flavor will have actually imparted here, but. Hmm. No, there's a bit of goji berry flavor in that. No. Goji berries you'd want to add after the wash of your tea so that you don't lose too much of the flavor right away, but they also do benefit. Goji berries benefit a lot more from steeping teas for a long time, like at least a minute, which is why white teas, I think, are so... <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that's why white teas are sort of so popular to use with goji berries and chrysanthemum, uh, because it's just, it does work so well as a palette for those new flavors. Mm. Crazy good. Crazy good tea. Gonna wipe the bottom of that and then move on. I've got to move some stuff around because I'm running out of space on my desk. I've got this massive L desk, but I'm running out of space because there's just guy ones everywhere. Oh my god. Anyway, here you go, chat. Here's your tea chat. Oh yeah. There you go. And then I'm gonna just wipe all this. Or rather, I'm gonna clean all this with a bit of boiling water. just let that sit for a bit so we can clean those cups make them nice and usable again this actually probably needs to be cleaned a bit better oops i just spilled a bit of water oh yeah also what i'm using that i'm dumping water into repeatedly is a tea table 
Uh, this is a really big wooden tea table, which is pretty fancy. But tea tables come in a lot of different forms. Some of them are wood, some of them are actually made of stone. Uh, the first tea table I ever got was about $15. Ordered it on Amazon. I have it over here, actually. This is my very first tea table. You can see it's very small compared to the one I'm using now. This is all you really need to start. Just something to pour off the wash and then any additional, you know, the feeding tea pads and everything. Whatever you use, you, know, you basically just want something that's gonna make it easier to dispose of it. And you also don't even need that. Like if you just have, you can just have like a Tupperware container on the side that you use for this sort of thing. And that'll work just as well. No, but I'm going to go ahead and set this up over here. And then uh, we're gonna move on to, ta-da, the oolongs. I know you've been waiting for this. I know I've been waiting for this. <laughs> I have so many oolong teas. My God, too many, perhaps even. But let's get started with this one. Uh, this is honey orchid oolong tea. This is a delicious tea. This is very sweet compared to most oolongs. Oolong tea has the most complex process to make it. There's a lot of steps. And the flavor of the tea is almost entirely dependent on how those steps are carried out by the skill of the person making the tea. As you can see here, this is, what makes oolong tea so different is how much more oxidized it is compared to a black tea or a puar tea. You know, it's got these, it's almost always gonna be super dark. I mean, it won't always be super dark like this. There's newer varietals now that are lighter in color, but they're always gonna be very oxidized and that's gonna be what makes them sort of have they have sort of a bitey flavor. It's, you know, it like it's very unique. It's almost like I'd compare it to pineapple, the way that kind of pricks at your mouth. You know, it this is oolong tea is very similar. This, like I said, the honey orchid, extremely good. I like this one a lot. I need to get more of this, honestly, because I don't have enough and I'm going to run out of it soon. That's one issue with these, you know. Uh, I'm trying to stop myself from ordering new teas because there's a bunch of games I want to play right now. <laughs> like, I really want to get Dragon's Dogma 2. But that game is $70. And I also want to get Helldivers 2. That game's $40. That's like, well, shit. You know, I can't buy new teas and also buy these super expensive games. I'm unemployed. Like, what the hell? What am I going to do? Uh, but next up, this is Bug Bitten Red Oolong Tea. This is super good. This has even more of that sort of bitey flavor to it. Uh, a lot of oolong teas, actually, this is, I'm glad this is the one I got. A lot of oolong teas you will see sort of rolled up super tight. Like those snail teas I showed off earlier were rolled into sort of loose balls. But oolong teas will be rolled super duper tight like this, where, you know, they're like almost like pebbles even. These will expand immensely and make an incredible tea. These are just fantastic, honestly. Oh, I just dropped them. These pebbles are also very valuable, so don't drop them. You can avoid it. Uh, I don't know where that went. Yeah, I think I lost it, whatever. But yeah, these extremely good. I think I might actually use this one. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna use this one. Hang on. Yep, I actually don't want to use this teapot. I don't want to use this because I want you to be able to see what happens when these sort of unfurl. So I'm going to put a couple in this guy one. That up there. Yeah. But, uh, depending on, I'll actually get it out right now. Sometimes lungs will come in a bag like this, uh, what I've been showing off. And sometimes they will come in a red sort of envelope like this. Uh, this is, you can see actually this, uh, you can see through the bag a little bit, that this is one of those super tightly rolled teas. Oh, uh, which tea is this? I feel like I'm forgetting. This is, this is Iron Goddess, I think. Where is it? This might be the Jingui, actually. I can't read which one this is because it's obscured, uh, but this is one of the first teas I got. 
This one has a lighter flavor, a bit closer because of the color, you can even tell, a bit closer to a green tea. Still very, very good. It's just gonna be slightly lighter in flavor. And then what's this? Uh, no, that wasn't the Angui. That was actually the Iron Goddess, I think. No, that might've been a Lacharo, actually. What's that? No, this is the Lacharo, actually. Never mind, my bad. This is the Hangui. Uh, I haven't had any of these rolled ones in a while, honestly. They've kind of been hanging around. This one's pretty nice. This one's uh, one of the first ones I had, and it's got a very... Oh, sorry, you can't even fucking see that because my dumbass is covering the screen. Uh, another one of these rolled teas. You can see this is also very light in terms of oxidation from the color. Uh, these ones, you know, when they come in packages like this, uh, like I said, it's good to just snip right across the top with scissors and not even bother with the pre-perforated tears you can make because it will just, it's just going to make a mess. It's going to be so hard to package and clean up, but it's good regardless, you know. Uh, then there's this one, which is one I just got recently. This is Mid-Roast uh, Ben Shang. This is not very good. This is very plain tasting. This kind of tastes, I almost want to say... Th this, I'd say, tastes basic. Like, this is sort of totally bog-standard oolong tea. Like, if you asked me what does oolong tea taste like... Oh, like, this is what I would use for... This isn't even what I'd say oolong tea tastes like. This is bad oolong tea. Yeah, which is probably why it wasn't that expensive. <laughs> but this is an oolong tea I'd use for, like, you know, with the goji berries to kind of use as a palette or something. Then we've got over here the rock gooey oolong tea. Also, any of the ones that are bagged up like this are going to be in those little pebble shapes like I showed off earlier. Just because... When the long tea is packed into strips like this, like the rock that we I'm about to show you. Yeah. When it is packed into strips like this, it is much more fragile. Like you'll see if I pick up a piece and just press on it, you'll see it just completely crumbles in my hand. And you want whole leaves to be as preserved in shape as possible. Uh, so they'll always be packed in sort of lighter bags like this, unless they're in those pebble shapes where they can take, you know, being vacuum sealed and sort of roughed up a bit. This is a rock gooey. This is a tasty oolong tea. This is what I'd say is probably my sort of de facto standard oolong tea. You know, this is, tastes very much so a basic. You know, this is a good oolong tea for people who haven't had it or who want to know, what does oolong tea taste like? Well, it tastes like this. And then, we're getting, we have some of my fancier oolong teas. This is, oh, more Iron Goddess. I have two different bags of Iron Goddess from two different brands, but I can show you sort of what it looks like inside those bags. You can see it's rolled up super tight. It's kind of, this is rolled a bit less tightly than the other ones, but it's still rolled up pretty well. Oh, your internet shit. Oh no, I hope it gets better. Internet's ISPs need to go to hell. <laughs> but you can see less oxidized, lighter color. It's got a slightly more mm, bite is the word again. I used to describe it. It's got bite, which is really nice. That's Iron Goddess. And then I'm trying to seal up this bag properly. Next up is Sweet Ginseng. This one is probably my favorite from this brand, Path of Cha. Um, this tastes incredible. It really is sweet. Ginseng is sort of prized as, oh my. You can see this has been almost coated in some, you can see. And it's got this gorgeous, it's rolled into the tiny little balls again. You know, the pebbles. This is incredible. This tastes delicious. Ginseng is one of those prized things that like, you know, tea lovers will get their hands on ginseng and it will cost a lot because of that. I live pretty close to Wisconsin, luckily, so I can actually get ginseng relatively cheap. Not cheap, but you know, 
I can drive to Wisconsin and get some ginseng as opposed to having to ship it and paying insane prices for it. But ginseng is just one of those prized things to add to your teas that just, ugh, takes it up a notch. Makes it so much more incredible. I'm just moving this pot over here. And then this is aged oolong tea. Gotta grab my balls really hard, snake, snake. Snake, don't squeeze my tea balls too hard. You're gonna break them. Snake, no! My tea balls. Anyway, here, this is more of these sort of ball teas. You can see some of the stems on this, actually, which is different, I think. But, yeah, this is aged oolong tea. Like, aged oolong tea, like I was saying earlier, is kind of the prize of oolongs, because oolong tea takes longest to make, and aging it, you have to do at least five years. So, this tea could not have been sort of, this couldn't have, yeah, this is from 2011, actually. You can see that. So this has been, this was picked in 2011, processed in 2011. Oh, it smells so good. A lot of oolongs will be charcoal roasted, which will affect the flavor somewhat. But, you know, charcoal roasted oolong, it's kind of just the, what you want, you know, it's the peak, almost. But here's the last tea I'm going to show off. This is stripped, stripped tea. Let me get it out into a platter. So this, this is probably the best, uh, or one of the best oolongs I have. Uh, ya Shi Xiang is the Chinese name from Guangdong province. Um, here's what it looks like. You see it's lightly oxidized. It's still got some sort of green color in it, which looks nice. And this tea in English translates to duck shit fragrance. There's a story behind that about the tea farmers who were growing this tea, recognizing how good it is, and to try to dissuade thieves from getting it, named it duck shit oolong to make it less attractive. Yes, it really is called Duck Shit Fragrance. This is one of the best oolongs you can get. It has a wonderful scent, wonderful flavor. flavor. It's up there as one of the best oolongs that you can get your hands on from Guangdong. And oh, it is really great. I, I tend to save this for special occasions, honestly. This and the ginseng I will save for special occasions to drink. You know, I will not have these super willy-nilly. I don't, I try not to save. It's back, let's go, yeah, <laughs> the duck shit. I just had this on my return stream, actually, back on last Sunday. Can you fucking believe? <laughs> I go, I stream for like a year and a half, you know, having weekly schedules and stuff, and it's like, oh yeah, this is going great. Take a three month break, come back, within a week I have affiliate, like nothing, like, yeah, they always say like, oh yeah, don't take a break longer than a month or else you'll uh, you'll impact your channel's growth. You know, you're gonna, your audience is gonna disappear. And it's like, my audience has never been this active. <laughs> I've been, I've been more active in this last week than I ever was before. What the fuck happened? <laughs> what happened? Oh my God. But yes, that is the oolongs. And now let's heat up this water a bit and I will show you um, sort of, we'll taste this tea. Which one was this again? This was one of these, right? This was Honey Orchid. Hell yeah. We're gonna drink some Honey Orchid tea. Let's go. One of my favorites. Let's fucking go. Oh, I want to move this over here, actually. I don't want this over where I can potentially knock it over. Yeah, let me adjust my camera a bit. You can see the light from outside my room sort of streaming in and affecting how things look. Looks nice though. Looks very nice. Uh, but yeah, let's see. Uh, where is... Uh, nope, okay. I was just peeking to see if I needed to do anything on my other screen, but it's fine. So oolong tea is um, much like dark tea and poor tea, where you want to steep it at a very high temperature. So, boiling, basically. The, the general rule of thumb I've seen for tea 
is that black tea you want at 200 degrees, dark tea, oolong tea, and puar tea you want at boiling, white tea you want at 185, and green tea you want at 175. And obviously you can make tea however you want, you can play with that range to go up or down for different teas to see how it's going to taste when you do that. But that's kind of just the general, like that's what's recommended in general, you know. But anyway, let's go ahead, get some water in there for the wash. We're going to do a slightly longer wash for this since these tiny little balls really need to open up. Open those balls. Make them very... Boiling water on my finger. Boiling water on my finger. Boiling water on my finger. Don't fucking, don't ever fucking swirl a guy one like that. You will get boiling water on your finger and it will hurt so fucking bad. But you can see first steep of this is coming out looking kind of like a white tea. You know, it's got that very light color. It's going to have a darker color after we uh, pour it again. But for now, here we go. Ooh, oh yeah, baby. There's a, like I said, there's a, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, I forget sometimes that you guys can't actually sniff the lid. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm like, I'm too, I'm getting too absorbed in offering my fucking lid to my webcam. <laughs> it's like, I'm starting to think you guys can actually smell the lid. I'm so sorry. You can, you can sniff her though. You can do a sniff her. You know, but yeah, it's the way it develops the sort of harshness of oolong is to me at least the appeal of oolong. Like I'm drinking oolong to get that harsh bitiness. It's just so, so good. It's this incredible, incredible flavor. It's basically unmatched in my opinion. You know, but anyway, let's go ahead. We're gonna let that steep again. Oolong tea, you can steep for a number of times. Oh, another stretch reminder. Hour two stretch reminder. Thank you, Lux. Uh, we'll stretch and then pour this tea out. Oh my God. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I'm stiff as hell. I'm stiff as hell just sitting here doing this, my God. Oh shit. I really gotta get back into aerobics. But you can see after that first steep. Thank you for the stretch, though. Oh, jeez. Jesus. Oh. You can see after that, it's darkened considerably, become more of that gold color. And we'll go ahead and pour it into our cups. And then I'm going to go ahead and steep this one last time. This is going to be the long steep, where we see what happens when this tea is steep for a long time. Ah, oh, there we go. Gosu, it's 1am and you're getting EP from the tea and melatonin. Tea and melatonin, my god! That's... you know tea has caffeine in it, right? <laughs> like, unless you were drinking herbal tea or chamomile. But like, dark black tea has... Lipton has caffeine in it, you know? You shouldn't be uh you shouldn't be drinking tea and then popping melatonin. That's kind of that, that's a bit counterproductive. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that nice. I mean, but if you have to go, thank you so. It's herbal. Okay, good. But thanks so much for stopping by and chatting, Lux, and thanks for the stretch reminders. I will have to just remind myself to stretch from now on. Ugh. Oh. Yeah. Uh, when you steep oolong tea for not a super long time, it kind of takes on a... full-bodied flavor, I'd say. Kind of, you know, it feels thicker in the mouth, even though it's not. It's got lightness to it sort of a sweetness to almost a, this specific tea almost has a juiciness to it much like the purple tea which is really nice mm. yeah that's really nice it's very light um and once again 
these teas change incredibly when you steep them for longer times. Like this right now is nice. This is what I would serve. I could serve this to somebody who's never had tea and I think they'd enjoy it. You know, it doesn't have that harshness you might expect from it. It's good, good tea. And you can actually get some of the bitiness that comes from uh, oolong tea in this. It's just not super present. But let's go ahead and pour off this steep. Ow, fuck. Ouch. Hmm. Hot. Yeah, if you let tea sit with boiling water in a gaiwan for too long, it will make the gaiwan too hot to touch. Bye, Glock chap, Francis, and lucky rat that he can't remember the name of it. Its name is Turbo. Her name is Turbo. My friend Celeste named the rat. Say goodbye. Say goodbye, friends. Say goodbye to Lux. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Lux. Hope you have a good night. Get some rest. Get some sleep. Oh. Yeah, there is the final steep. Hmm. Yeah, this is not one of the harsher. Turbo, yes, Turbo. My friend Turbo. Yeah, here's that nice dark color you get from this. This is the color that I kind of, this is the color I want to see long be. So, I suppose I should be, oh, sorry, I should have poured your cup first, Chad. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, this is the sort of color I personally want my oolong tea to be. This sort of darkish gold, amber almost. And that's what I think gets the best flavor. Oh yeah, this, this one definitely benefits from being steep longer. At a certain point, it's diminishing returns. Like a dark, a ripe puar tea, which we're gonna get to in a second, does not really benefit from being steeped longer than 10 seconds. You know, 10 seconds is as long as it needs to release all its flavor. And if you go past that point, you're just wasting the tea. You know, and this is kind of similar. This hasn't developed a ton in the longer steep time, but it's still, you know, it's stronger in flavor. It's still pretty nice. Yeah, very good tea. Definitely holds up well. Just good in general. I mean, you know, you can't go wrong with any of these teas. They all have different qualities. I think this one is definitely less than I want from a oolong, though. You know, but it's an easy drinker. This is something you could drink, like, every day, and you won't get too sick of it. But yeah, this is a bit hot, though. I do want to move on, so I'm going to give the rest of it to the cats. Enjoy the tea, my friends. Man, these tea pets are getting fed today. They don't usually get this much tea. They usually only get one pour of tea a day. Now they're getting like, what, 10 pours? How many pours of tea have these guys gotten? They're drinking all my dang tea. My God. Anyway, uh, let's clean this up really quick. Ow, that's putting water on my finger. I bumped the mic again. I can't believe I keep doing this. Anyway, give it a quick rinse. Pour these off. There we go. All right, now the final tea. My favorite kind of tea. This is not going to be everyone's favorite kind of tea. This is a... I don't even think this is something... This isn't even really a flavor you get used to. It's not even an acquired taste. It's just, I think you like it or you don't. This is Puar tea. It's in my biggest basket, as you can see. But this is my favorite kind of tea. This tea is incredibly dark. This is a tea that is going to... Just, you're going to see this. It looks like coffee when you brew it. It's so, so dark. It's so, so good, though. It comes in a lot of ways, such as one of my favorite ways it comes is in these. These are Gonteng Puars in Tangerines. Now, I'm gonna open this bag 
And these are going to be wrapped, but I can show you the packaging. So here's what these look like in a package. And these are literally just dried tangerines that have been stuffed full of our tea. You could also get these stuffed with other kinds of teas. Like you can get these with white tea or black tea or, you know, I think, I don't know, you couldn't do this with green tea. I don't think just because of the, um, just because of how it ages. But then this is what they actually look like. You see, they've, they're hollowed out tangerine skins that are stuffed full of tea. Super duper nice, super tasty. Uh, they've got a very strong sort of orangey flavor, not even orangey, not even citrusy. Aged citrus has such a different flavor to normal citrus. And really you don't want to like brew it in this whole tangerine because that's going to be too powerful. That's going to taste too strongly of citrus. You won't get any of the tea. You want to dump the tea out and then break off bits of the citrus if you really wanted to. But I only have three of these. These are very much so. I saved these for, you know, when I'm in the mood, when I'm like up late at night writing or something, I'll have one of these. But next up is these guys. These are Tuchas. These are really cool. I like these a lot. This was the first tea I ever actually had in this style. And they're just shaped like this. And then you unwrap these and it's just little super compressed uh, things of tea. This specific kind of tucha is a bit loose. Like this is as close to tea dust as I think I own anymore. And also because of that, the caffeine content of these guys is insanely high. Like if I drink one of these, I am going to be shaking after because of how much caffeine is in it. So this is like, if I need, like, if I'm like, oh, I could really use an espresso shot right now. I'll have one of those. I'll just have one of them. Uh, next up is this one. This is not on my menu because it sucks. This is Yunnan Sourcing's Cozy Pour Tea Cake. Um, this tastes like nothing. I don't like it. I don't really drink it. I honestly need to just finish it at some point so I can stop having it. This is what it looks like. You can see how dark it is. This is how dark Pour Tea normally is. Just got this nice sort of dark, earthy flavor to it. Ripe tea especially. Well, everything I've just shown is ripe Pu'er tea. Pu'er tea, what makes it different from normal black teas and whatnot is that it is fermented. It is pressed down uh, while wet into these cakes, and then it is kept and fermented for a couple months, uh, and it gives it this super strong flavor. You know, this super deep, earthy flavor that also gives it the super dark color as well. And it's just so good. Of course, it is a particular taste for a particular kind of person, but I love it personally. Uh, I'm going to go BRB for a second because I really have to use the bathroom because I've been drinking a ton of tea this entire time. So I'm going to be right back. I'm sorry to sort of dip like this, but we'll be back. We will show the rest of this and then we'll drink some tea. Okay. I just realized, but when I do my BRBs now, 
I should probably be playing like ads, shouldn't I? <laughs> like, when I go to BRB and like I'm gone for like a minute, I should probably play like a one minute ad, shouldn't I? Just like to, I mean, if I'm going to be away anyways, right? Nothing's going to be on stream, so I don't know. Feels like that's a good thing to do, maybe. I don't know. I don't. I should do a poll on all my different platforms asking what people prefer with that. But regardless, for now, back to the tease. Uh, let me move this out super quick. Uh, all right. But anyway, next up is that uh, uh, Chen Yun Raw Puar. Ah, Raw Puar is slightly different from um, the Bright Puar in that it's not fermented. No. Oh, that's not right. No. This is a cake. Puar, almost always, you're going to see in a cake. But you can see here, raw puar is much lighter in color, closer to a green or white tea in color, honestly. But you can tell the difference if you've seen them. Like, raw puars almost have... I almost want to say they have a golden sheen to them. Like, they have such... They also just have completely their own flavor profile like a raw puar is oh a raw puar is something special i'm not gonna drink a raw puar today just because the color is very similar to an oolong uh but my god any raw puar is gonna be really good this one the chen yun is pretty good on its own it's not my favorite from yunnan sourcing my favorite from yunnan sourcing i actually go see if i can find it they've got a cake they make themselves that I really love that I've been meaning to actually pick up some of but again it's that thing where I'm trying to decide if I should spend my money on tea or games and it's kind of getting to me where is it here it is uh the Yunnan sourcing impression cake is my favorite um what's it called this is my favorite raw puar from Yunnan sourcing that I've had at least I haven't had all of them Here's what it looks like. Pretty identical to what I just showed off. Maybe a tiny bit darker. Uh, but this is very, very good. Incredibly delicious. I just dropped a bunch of it underneath my tea table. Hang on, let me scoop that out here. Like I said, these teas are expensive. I try not to lose them in a dropping moment. But there we go. But yeah, raw puars are kind of, I'd say, I, I've seen them considered the fanciest of teas, and I can totally see why. They are very, very good. They're delicious. They're just incredible. They've got a flavor like quite literally nothing else, and you can steep them forever, basically. Um, there we go. Oh, that was more than I wanted. This is La Chateau uh right you are in a brick uh so like i said teas are compressed into cakes a lot of the time to be shipped and when you need to compress them even tighter uh you would do it into a brick like this and this i mean you know hang on let me just i mean listen to this you know th these are rocks basically these are so tightly compressed that there's almost like you'd have to use um, a puar knife like this to break this apart. You know, bricks are super tightly packed. Uh, they also, in my experience, I've seen bricks sold typically for a lot less than cakes are. So I'm not sure if that's a trend with tea bricks in general. Uh, but, you know, it's something I've noticed. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I just dropped a bunch of these. They're all falling off my goddamn shelf. <laughs> Because this basket is way too big. Alright, hang on, let me a sec to just wipe this. So I can have a clean. Uh, okay, that just fell in my art book. I think it's like a bit short for now. God damn. Okay. I really need to wrap up here so I can have my bench back. Let's see. Ah, this is uh, just a generic right puar from 1992. It's aged for a long time, but this actually, this honestly isn't one of my preferred puars. Like, it tastes a bit light in flavor. No, it's not my favorite at all. 
you can see this is just straight loose leaf tea, not packed into anything. Very easy on the eyes, I suppose. And, you know, this is a good tea. It's fine. Uh, I can never get as many steeps out of it, though, which is odd. Like, I'll only get three or four steeps out of this one, so... I gotta be careful with that. That's sort of why I don't drink it as often. I suppose that could be a sign that it wasn't stored super well or something, but... Anyway. Next up is... This is... What is this? Chunning Shen. Raw Puar again. I love my raw puars. This is my one raw puar mini game. I can see, like I said, it's very similar in color to the uh, white teas I've shown, but this is compressed much tighter. It's obviously, you know, gone through process to make it more tea. You can see it's actually left a bit of oil along this wrapper. This is a phenomenal tea. Uh, I might have this later tonight, honestly. I'm not going to have it right now, but yeah, maybe later. And then, my final tea, and the one we are going to drink, is this one uh, from Yunnan Sourcing. I don't remember the name of it, because uh, I can't read the Chinese on the wrapper. What's this called? It's on here. I know what it's called. Uh, this is the Mengku Tang Tiao from them. Very, very good. This has a light creaminess to it. Uh, I would almost call it, yeah, no, I, it's a creaminess is the only way I can say it. I've, I saw someone in the comments of this one describe it as being a bit like, um, sorry, as being a bit like condensed milk, like the flavor of condensed milk, not the sweetness, but the flavor specifically of it. And I think that's pretty accurate. It really does have this really nice flavor. Uh, this is my biggest cake. You know, I have a ton of this. Hang on, I'm gonna try to show it off without spilling everywhere. Uh, here's what it looks like. Like I said, a ton of this. I'll drink this if I'm ever in the mood for just a puar in general. This is what I drink. And this is what I'm gonna drink right now, actually. Just show off a puar. Um, I mean, luckily there's a bunch of dust up. So I'm just gonna take some of the dust and put it in my teapot. Hang on. There we go. We love dust. We love that dust. I mean, we don't. Just, you want whole leaves. You know, you don't want dust. But times like this, I am great for the dust. Okay. We're going to heat up some water. I'm going to repack up. But that is... Almost every tea I have, the only other tea I have, which I'm not going to show off, because it's not really a tea, per se. It's not a tea that I would show off in the same context as all the other teas I've been showing, but hang on, I will show it off really quick, as soon as I get all this packed back up so I can not have it fucking flailing around everywhere. Um, but yeah, the one other thing I have is actually... What I have been having my webcam sit on this entire time to record. Um, hello, I'm trying to, I'm going to try to, is this, that works, I guess. Hey, that actually works even better. How much sugar do I like in my tea? No less than two tablespoons per cup. Yeah, this isn't the kind of key tea you'd add sugar to. I, unless it was in the form of a goji berry. If I'm having like a tea latte, like a London Fog, I'll obviously put sugar in, but you know, that's Earl Grey. But the one other tea I have is... Actually, here's a tea I might do that with. This is a little tin. This is what I've been stacking my webcam on this entire time to uh, sort of be able to track myself. But this is instant tea. And uh, I recognize you probably have an idea of what instant tea looks like. This is not that. This is the instant tea I have. So this is instant puar tea. Uh, these green little things are instant raw puar, and then the gold ones are instant ripe puar. Uh, these I don't really drink anymore, but I drank these a lot when I used to work earlier in the morning, and I had to, um, you know, I'd want to be straight out the door in a pretty quick fashion, and so I would have these. Uh, you basically drop one in with about, I don't know, a cup and a half of water, give or take, 
and it will uh it makes tea you know that's just the start and end of it it makes a tea but anyway here is the tea i'm making right now this is the sort of color you should expect to see from a poor tea on the first tea even quicker if you eat them like candy um so these are called tea resins actually these are made from boiling tea and reducing it into a paste and then into a resin. You do not want to eat these. It's not going to taste good. It's going to taste really bad, actually. But this is something I really love to see, which is the color of ripe Puar tea during the wash. We're not going to drink this. This is not going to taste good if we drink it. But this sort of rose color is phenomenal, and I love to just look at it. It's so nice. You know, like, look at how it pours. Like, it really does look like a rosé when you pour it like this. But regardless, this is not good drinking. So we're giving it to the pets. Oh my god. Yeah. So poor tea, right poor tea especially, takes a lot longer to open up. But I want you to watch now. I'm going to actually clear this off a bit clear this area so you can see much more clearly what this color is going to be like. Certainly couldn't be worse than the time you've bitten into a caffeine pill. Oh, I used to do that. <laughs> I used to do it. I didn't bite into them. I would crush them up in a mortar and pestle and add them to my water bottle. <laughs> and that's how I would get my caffeine for the day. A terrible way to do it, frankly. I would not recommend it. Uh, I did that because I was depressed and I didn't know it. But yeah, you don't want to do that. But yeah, dark poor tea like this only needs, I want to say, like I said, 10 seconds most. Really? This is fine. Look how much darker it already is. This is only the second step, too. So now I'm going to immediately go in for one last steep in here. We're going to do a lot of water. Oh, never mind. I'm actually out of water. Shit. All right, that's going to be an incredibly dark tea then. <laughs> Go. God, I should serve chat. You can see how dark this is. Much darker than anything else you're likely to get. And that's sort of where that dark earthiness comes from with this tea. Like, the flavor is just so good. <laughs> like, you know, I I've heard people say it tastes like dirt, which I suppose in a way it does. It's not an acquired taste, like I said. You like it or you don't. <laughs> the term I actually see used to describe people who like QRT a lot. Actually, and I don't know where this term came from. I should probably look up where it came from. But the term I always see used is poor lesbian. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. I don't know why people who like poor tea are called that. But poor lesbian is the uh, sort of denomer for them. Oh. Fantastic. Dark and earthy. This is a, apparently this is what they'll serve at dim sum places. I just watered down a lot. And I can see why. This is a really nice, like, this would be really good. Now, I would drink this while I was eating something sort of heavy and rich. I might get Chinese food later, actually, and just have some of this with it. Fantastic. Look at that color. Can you, can you beat it? Oh, I didn't even let you guys smell the lid, actually. That's my bad. It's harder to smell the lid on a small teapot like this, but, you know, it's still good to sniff it. It's just part of the experience to give a sniff to the lid, you know? And like I said too, pour tea, you want boiling water for the most part. You want really, really hot water that's gonna... Mm. Very good. I'm gonna pour this back in here so we have... And I'm gonna pour this over my pets. Then let's see... Now you're gonna get to see how dark this stuff can get. Hang on, here we go. This is the type of color that I want to see when I'm drinking Quartine. 
look at that. And that's not even as dark as it can get. If I had used the proper amount of pority, this would have gotten even darker. Would have looked even better. I mean, my God, that's... Look at that. It literally looks like coffee. Like... It would have gotten even darker if I had given it more steeps, but... This is that gorgeous color you can only get with the right ORT. Just so fantastic. So delicious. Just everything I could possibly want from a tea right in there. So pretty, so pretty. Like this is this is a show tea. You know, this is a tea you show people to be like, hey, check the check out this real authentic imported Chinese tea, and you show them this. Ooh. They just watch the look on their faces as they see it for the first time. Mm. Oh yeah. And when you get dark steeps like this is when you can taste sort of the subtleties of it. Like this is where you get that flavor of condensed milk, of sort of cooked milk that's, oh. Yeah, that's crazy good. This is my favorite tea. My favorite kind of tea, my favorite tea to just drink when I'm hanging around. Honestly, I'll probably make more of this. Like, after I'm done here, after I've cleaned up, I probably will just leave this setup out. I'll probably just add some more leaves into that, and I'll just make more of this tea. So good. Uh. Yeah, crazy. Crazy delicious. Oh, actually, no, I'm not gonna, because I was gonna drink that dark tea, actually. But such a good... You know, I'd recommend this. I'd recommend, like I said, all the teas I have, most of the teas I've shown actually are available on Yunnan sourcing. You can buy them yourself to try. It's just, oof. I love tea so much. <laughs> I really do. I really do love just the flavor, the work that goes into it, the, you know, how deeply you can get involved with, you know, learning about it. Fantastic. Mm. There's something special about it. Oh, there's something peaceful about it. Like the process of making it is pretty simple, but it's just uh, everything else about it is so great. That's the end of that. And chat, I'm sorry, but I'm going to drink your tea too, because I really do like this tea. So this is my favorite, favorite style of tea. I'll give the rest to our friends, tea pets. Oh yeah. And there we go. And then when you reach the end of a tea session like this, there's nothing left to do but appreciate it. You know, the tea pets, they're gonna hang out, but we have enjoyed ourselves. You know, we gotta, you know, we'll have to empty out this tea table and deal with all the liquid that's pooled in it. That's easy. <clears throat> Excuse me. One thing uh, I see advised a lot with tea, though, is to not wash any of your equipment with soap. You know, just hot water and a fresh sponge. Like, I have a separate sponge that I specifically use only for tea equipment. Like, I will use it. No soap ever touches it. Just hot water. And that is enough to get stains out of your tea as long as you wash it pretty soon after you've had your tea. The longer you let it sit, let's see if any of these have started to stain. Um, hmm. Not really. You can sort of see actually with this lid. Yep, and pour it down your mouth. Yeah, no, uh, don't do that part. But you can see the lid of this has actually gotten stained over time. It's sort of discolored because I haven't done a great job of cleaning it. And this will eventually happen with anything that you don't, you know, clean super vigorously. It's up to you if you want to clean it super vigorously. You know, I know some people really appreciate the sort of stains and what they add to it. Like, the inside of this is probably the best example of that. Like, if you look inside, you can see the cracked pattern that's absorbed the color of the teas that have gone in. Just makes it look even prettier. Like, this has become something phenomenally pretty thanks to the stains in it. And I wouldn't want, like this one, I would not want to clean super vigorously because then I wouldn't be able to get something this pretty, right? 
like this it, part of appreciating tea is appreciating the work that goes into it and appreciating how it's prepared and that's you know this is just part of that it's nice and it's enjoyable and it's a good time to have you know serve tea to your friends serve it to folks watching you from across the world <laughs> serve it however you like because tea is good and it's meant to be enjoyed you by the people you care about and by anyone who enjoys good that's it that's that's a review of every single not really a review even i didn't even really review these i kind of just talked about them i, I don't think i even could rank these honestly like, there's just so many of them and i don't think i could easily rank them all but you know what i will do is i will uh show off here do a little oops do a little bit of show off oh i bumped my mic i keep bumping my fucking mic i'm so sorry that probably sounds terrible let's show off let's show off all my guy one got one two oh that's a bit crook. two Three and four. there we are. This is all the tea equipment I tend to use. And let's pop that up. Bumps don't make loud noises. Actually, that's good. I still don't really want to do it. But <laughs> yeah, here's all my guy ones. I actually have one more pot, but it's like a travel set that I don't really tend to use anymore because I don't travel with tea as much. Which is a bit sad. I should. I should go out more with my tea. But yeah. Yep. Take a look at this. Wowie. This is probably... How much money have I spent on everything here? This was a gift, like I said, so I didn't spend anything on this. This was, I think... How much was this? I think this was $18 around. Maybe less. I'm gonna say this was 20 This was about $30. This guy won. This one, I got at a thrift shop, actually, for $5. And then this one was, again, around $20, I think. Maybe $25 for this one. That's what, 25 30 60 80 Yeah, so $80 all told. Plus my travel set, which was, I think, $25. So probably about $100 total on all these guy ones. <laughs> It is a nice collection. And I also, I always get tempted to buy new guy ones. Like there's been a guy one I've had my eye on for so long. That's, I me mean, actually, I don't think I have a picture of it anymore, but it's got like a bunny painted on it. And especially now that it's spring, like that's just like, I just gotta have that, you know? I gotta get that thing. It's so pretty. I have to have it. I have to, I have to, have to, have to, have to, have to have it. My God. Regardless, that's it. That's that's the stream. Um, yeah, that's the tea. <laughs> that's the that's the tea. Oh, that that's my tea. And that's what to get here. Anyway, uh, oh damn, why isn't my? That's weird. My Streamlabs doesn't seem to have. Uh, registered the new sub that should have uh, Oxy should be showing up here why isn't she most recent subscriber is that not referring to subs but like YouTube subscribers most recent donor follower gift sub sub gift subscribe sponsor to chat cheer up weird i don't know why that's not showing up i'll fix that later yes thank you for coming kyle thank you also obviously thank you witch for raiding thank you uh folksy for raiding let me move my camera back over top of my monitor here ah there we go okay yes thank you oh i should fix that actually hang on one sec you're gonna see my stuff oh But yes, thank you all so much for coming and watching. This wasn't really a celebration stream, honestly. 
Uh, this was much more just me chatting about tea, chatting about something I like a lot. And yeah, uh, obviously every stream I open by making some tea in this style. So that's, you know, it's what I tend to do. And it's, yeah. Congrats on affiliate. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, nothing is going to change. <laughs> Nothing's going to change except I don't even know how I'm going to do ads yet. I still haven't decided if I want to just stick with having pre-rolls and then run ads during my breaks or if I want to do ads at the top and end of every hour so I don't have pre-rolls and then just take a break that time. Oh, thank you for the stretch. One last stretch for the road. Oh, shit. Oh. Yeah, that's rough oh all right well i think i'm gonna stop here and let's see if we can raid into anyone who's live who's around who's up who up uh who up who up abs is streaming art i should raid into him what is he drawing? Hmm. This thing, who else? Uh, hmm. All right, you know, let's raid into Pabs. Now I have my thing set up here. So I can just type it out. Pabs, there we go. All right, we're going to raid Pabs. Uh, thanks so much, everyone, for coming. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me ramble on about tea. Uh, oh, uh, my schedule's going to be up in a minute on my... Uh, I'll post my schedule right after stream ends over on my Twitter. You can check there for the schedule. I'll probably also add a thing down in the description about it. But yeah, thanks so much for coming. Thanks for watching. Say hi to Pabs. And yeah, hope you have a good night or a good day, whatever it is, wherever you are. Right, bye. Bye.